Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to call the January 31st board meeting of the Community Development Recommending Board to order. I'd like to remind everybody this is being recorded. Uh, staff, are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, we are. Would staff like to do roll call? Chair Pappas. Present. Member Miller. Present. Member McFadden. Present. Member Cervantes. Member Aker. Present. Member Hartley. Present. Member McCoy. Present. And I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this. Is Member Berkey? Um, <coughs> no longer? No longer. Member McGrath? No longer. Aww. I am Member Davis Hogger. Hogger? No longer. But just for this cycle. Okay. And I get everyone. Member Asselin? Present. And Member Jordan is excused. Yeah, Member Jordan. Thank you. Thank you, staff. You're the welcome. next item on our agenda is our public comment during this open pub, um, during this public comment period. Our guests are welcome to address anything that's on the agenda. If there's anybody who'd like to speak, yes, ma'am. If you could just, uh, would you mind just standing up here? I know you're going to be glaring in the light, but just, just announce your name. Sure. Thank you Hi, so much. I'm Rachel Fessenstein. We met a few weeks back. I'm the director of Las Vegas Senior Lifeline. And I really just wanted to come back and just make one more reminder about the importance of our program. Um, uh, um, hold on, I'm going to stop you for just a second. Is this appropriate for this time? Is this okay? Um, yeah, it's, it's on the agenda. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Sorry, just check. No, no, no. no. All I wanted to say was very quickly in 30 <coughs> seconds is that after our meeting, I went back and I really thought about everyone that presented and the importance of everyone that was there. And to let you all know that the final figures for us is that we have 350 seniors, present seniors in our program, and last year 248 seniors that we served were from the city of Las Vegas. And that any amount, small, big, a quarter, a half, whatever you provide for us, provides us with case, a case manager to reach out to the city of Las Vegas clients. And though not all of the funding may come today to us, um, whatever you do give us, we will work and do our best to stretch and to make it happen and to make sure that we meet the needs of all of our clients. And I just really wanted to just reiterate that today and thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anybody else who'd like to make a statement? Is this a good for me? Is that? I'm going to come. I'm going to come to you after we do the disclosures. Is that all right? Okay then. Moving on. Staff, do we have a report on supplements to applications? Uh, Sean Bolster, staff, do you have your uh, scoring? Do you have the, um, how your scoring came out, your ranking in paper in front of you? Because you won't be able to see that, how that works out on um, Zoom. And so you can follow along. We have it up on the screen for you. Um, we're going to do Hopwa first. Once we're finished with Hoppo, we will do like a, a few minutes break, then we'll do CDBG. Um, as a reminder, in the past, once you've gone to um, your recommendation, you've had a board member um, do the first and the second, so you may want to choose who that's going to be to alleviate your confusion. Speed things along. Correct. Also, um, as uh, chair and co chair, probably. I'd like to ask board members if there are any disclosures, and I'm going to go ahead and call for disclosures for both HOPWA and CDBG, just in the interest of time and expedience. Uh, Member Miller, uh, 
I just have a question. There's four organizations um, uh, with, uh, we deal with public service that I think there's a conflict of interest, so I want to verify. Um, one would be the Clark County Public Education Foundation. Um, I voiced that in the minutes that I was concerned since I, I work for the Clark County School District, and I think that was appropriate um, since it is affiliated with the school. Uh, the Las Vegas Clark County Urban League. Um, I sit on the board when I believe they're the president of their board. And uh, I do sit on a committee for the Foundation for Positive and Kids. I know that is a direct conflict of interest. Terry Ponticello, Deputy City Attorney. With respect to the Clark County School District and the yes. Clark County Foundation, you, in what capacity do you work for the Clark County School District? I'm an administrator. You're an administrator for the school district? Yes, sir. And you, what do you do with just just the interaction between the Clark County any School kind District of and the public? Programming that they introduce or bring anyone onto our campus to do any instruction or to provide any resources for teaching staff, they implement it, and then I have to. And you deal direct, so you deal directly with the Clark County Public Foundation. Yes. Well, with uh, this foundation? Not directly with this foundation. The program that was the reason why I was asking this program that they. We're dealing with. I remember the presentation was in elementary school, and I'm not at the elementary level. Is and so anything with this particular application has to be. No, I don't believe it. it would be, but I don't want anything to be construed as a conflict of interest when it comes to this board. Even though there would probably be ways yeah. to institute firewalls yeah. to ensure that there is no conflict of interest as an abundance of caution, I would recommend that you go ahead and abstain. abstain. Okay. And for clarification, is she does she have to leave the room when we do the voting? No, she can just, 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 just discuss not or allowed, vote. She's not allowed to engage in the discussion because she's not allowed to vote. Thank you very much. So that's those three organizations, Foundation for Positively Clids, Clark, Las Vegas, Clark County Urban League, and the Clark County Public okay. Education Foundation. Okay, on, on the other two, on the other organizations in which you sit as a board member of those that I sit on another board with that individual. Oh, so you don't serve on the boards for I these don't folks. serve on the, I, no, I serve on the, I serve on a committee, a board committee for Foundation of Positivity Kids. Every year I always have to abstain, I'm aware of that one. But I was questioning the Urban League one because their president sits on a, on a board with me. I don't see that as a conflict. Okay. Thank you. Board members, any other conflicts to, potential conflicts to? Do you, if I can go back to the one on the Urban League, do you believe that your <coughs> relationship with that other board member would impinge or somehow cause you to not have a, a, a bias decision or no, a bias I do decision? Not. Okay. I don't believe that. Okay, so you can make a decision regardless of that. Go ahead. You, uh, you can probably go ahead and vote on that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. No other disclosures? I want to take this moment to remind everybody to silence your cell phones. I always forget to do that. Moving right along, now we get to the now we get to the nitty gritty of it. Discussion for possible action to recommend allocation of fiscal year 2012-2013 housing opportunities for persons with AIDS grant funds. Up on the screen, you will see the five programs. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, I was looking straight at you, too. <coughs> Member McFadden has a statement that she'd like to read before we begin our deliberations. Member McFadden, <clears throat> I truly feel honored to be on this committee. Uh, the drive and devotion of all of the applicants is inspiring and reinforces my belief in the goodness of the people in our great city. Every year, I look forward to helping with these programs to help these programs receive funding that will assist them in achieving their worthwhile goals. Judging this year has been particularly difficult for me, given both the decrease in funds available as well as increase in requests. Each of the applicants this year has brought forward an outstanding program for us to consider. And if we had unlimited funds, I would love to see them all receive some or all of their requests. But as the saying goes, tough times call for tough measures. Um, although our unemployment rate seemed to have dropped slightly, the reality is that our city is having a major crisis on the homeless front. I have lived in Las Vegas most of my life, and I have 
we've seen, seen recessions come and go. Las Vegas was long thought to be somewhat recession proof, and we rode out most of these recessions with relatively minor repercussions. This recession, depression, coupled with the cataclysmic foreclosure epidemic has crippled us, causing us to be one of the nation's top foreclosure markets. I would be surprised if there was anyone in this room who does not know personally or professionally someone who has lost their job and or home. I know I do. <coughs> they are not the lost faces that we hear about in the homeless corridor anymore. They are neighbors, friends, families, and co-workers. One of our applicants cited in an article in the November 6, 2011 Review Journal that stated a 40% increase in homelessness since 2009. I verified this information. Any increase is not acceptable, but this route is disastrous. I believe that in some small way today, we have the ability to help heal our city. I am recommending that given the circumstances that exist here this year, we make a bold move to concentrate our funding on supporting the basic human needs of the homeless category this year, with the hope that it will help and that next year we can continue our mission to help every category. Thank you. Um, Sean um, on staff, as a uh, reminder for the HUP program, the um, categories uh, for funding, the agency submitted one application with multiple um, funding components. So when you're looking at the applications, uh, <coughs> some agencies have one component, some agencies have multiple components. And with the uh, HAPA program, it is a Housing First grant, so you're going to need to take a look at that. And with public service, you uh, have the leeway, certainly, to uh, take a look at how the applications flesh out. And we have the ability to data sort that so you can kind of see how the applications flesh out um, by categories. So we can do that for the public service and you can take a look at it if you are, um, as a board willing to entertain Member McFadden's uh, suggestion. Thank you. <coughs> board members, does anybody else have any comments? Before we begin, I want to add a little something to Member Devitter Pappas. I want to add something to Member McFadden's statement. First of all, I'm gratified by seeing so many of the applicants here. In years past, we've had one or two that would come to this decision process, and I, I really appreciate that all of you took the time out of your incredibly busy schedules to be here today. This is not easy. You're going to see that it's not easy. Um, the example on the screen isn't a good one, but for, for, for our CDBG, we have so little money to give with so much need out there. And I, I, no matter how this turns out, I am so impressed with every one of the agencies that come forward. I'm impressed with the city of Las Vegas for what we do to recognize the need out there and, and the cooperation that everybody shows. Thank you all so much for being here. And uh, please know that however this shakes out, none of this is going to be easy for any of us. So thank you. And with that said, Let's open our discussion to possible action to recommend allocation of fiscal year 2012-2013 housing opportunities for persons with people with AIDS grant funds. Does anybody have a recommendation they want to make to get the ball rolling? Ever <coughs> Based on the statement for housing, um, I make a recommendation that we forward fund both AFAN and Golden Rainbow. Please go ahead and make the change as they're, as they're proposed so that we can see the changes as they're happening. And then if we need to go back, hopefully we'll remember what to go back to. <laughs> okay? So the recommendation was to fully fund AFAN and fully fund Golden Rainbow. Um, staff, sorry, Sean Bolster, staff. When you are um, working with your straw poll members, you're going to make a suggestion. Suggestion. It's a suggestion. Sorry, that clipped right after she said it. So when you're 
Until you're ready to make your um, recommendation, then uh, as you're going back and forth with your numbers, it's suggestions. These are all suggestions. And again, to board members, remember to state your name before you speak, before the record. Thank you very much. Member McFadden, I stand corrected. I'd like to make a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Member McFadden. Anybody else? Okay, Demeter Pappas, taking that recommendation in place, that suggestion, geez, here I go. I would like to make a suggestion that we, and let me pull up my little cat, my little handy dandy calculator, someday I'm gonna bring a real calculator to these things. Um, we currently have $344,000, 475 remaining to to distribute. <coughs> so based on that recommend based on the amount left and the scoring of the five, of the three can three remaining candidates. I'm just going to throw numbers out there to get us talking. Let's look at funding community counseling HIV supportive services what do you think? In the amount of Wait, let's see. One in, in the amount of one hundred and eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty five dollars I'd like to suggest we fund a women's development center in the amount of seventy three thousand six hundred and seventy two and we fund help of Southern Nevada food vouchers in the amount of one hundred and fifty two thousand five hundred and forty eight board member McCoy Question. What was your recommendation for Women's Development Center? It's right up there on the screen. Women's Development Center, I recommended 73,672. Suggested. suggested, I suggested. suggested. The, and the way, for the, board, for the board members who haven't been here, uh, been, been doing this with me before, what I, what I, where I'm basing those three numbers, how are you doing? <laughs> what I'm suggest where I get the suggestion from is I am taking the recommended or the requested amount and I am multiplying it straight out by the rating average. So that what for, for the community counseling center, that hundred and eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty five is eighty eight point two five percent of their request. And I do that just to give us a place to start from and now we can negotiate if anybody has a recommendation on raising or lowering one of the other options, suggestions. <laughs> She's just, just keep doing that. Um, just here. Christensen, if you want me to plug in or calculate any numbers so you don't have to go to the side, ask me and I'll plug it in. You're awesome. Thank you. So, board members, any, any suggestions, any changes? Board member McCoy. Yes. Um, I would like to suggest that we fully fund Women's Development Center for the Eighty-nine thousand one hundred five, and then up here where the box yeah. is, that is, that will show you what we're in the hall. Yeah. And where do you want that? Where do you suggest that fifteen thousand be taken from? Writing suggestion. Board member, board member McCoy, I would suggest we take it from AFAN. Okay. While well, we get that, while well, we get that total, Devinder Pappas, I'm sorry. While well, we get that total, uh, I, I would like to remind members that if we look at our scoring, AFAN did get the highest score. And that should that should carry. I think, in my opinion, that should carry for something, especially if board members agree. Go ahead and make the change. Especially if board members agree that we that our focus should be on homelessness, then that combined with their <coughs> top score should perhaps um, they shouldn't be penalized just because they're asking for the most amount. Remember with that. Um, I make the suggestion that we go back to the original amount for ACAN, but take the. Uh, the difference from Health of Southern Nevada as the lowest score. Now, if you go to, 
Tammy go do, put, put the full funding amount for community counseling. No, just go ahead and put the full funding amount there. And then go down and remove the, and delete the dollar figure from Help of Southern Nevada. Just delete it. And then that, that tells you at the top, under funds remaining, what you can fill in there. You're welcome. I like these, I like Devinder Pappas, I like these numbers, I think they reflect the scores, and of course as we all discussed, there, there is incredible need out there, but this gets us where we're going to be, Member Hartley. It also puts our funding with the housing, which is the part of the program. Thank you. Officer. Member Sean Miller. <laughs> You're having a hard day, Member Miller. Also, I'm just putting it into the record when we have the presentations. Luckily, these organizations do a lot of collaborative effort, and they're working together. They're merging their, their things together. So we may see a number and think that that's low, but if you remember what we read, somewhere in there, they're going to get connected. And based off of the scores, based off of our focus and need, and particularly for housing, I think that the suggestions are, are very valid. Make a motion that we close the discussion? I will make a motion that we close this discussion of suggestions. Second? Never make bold, my second. Okay. So <coughs> what we need is we need a member to make a motion on each one of those items, and the motion will be, I'm going to do say four instance because I can't do it. Um, I make a motion that we recommend a fan homeless prevention services in the amount of this amount of I make a motion that we make a recommendation to the city council. I make a motion that we make a recommendation to the city council that we fund this program in the amount of this many dollars. Then somebody else will second the motion and then the, and then we'll vote and then we'll do the next one. So do we have a volunteer to, to make the for, to make the motion? I'll give it a try. Thank you. Do I have a motion to mm -hmm. your second. Fed. All right. Chair recognizes member McFadden. I make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council to fund a fan for the amount of six hundred and fifty-eight thousand three hundred and forty-nine dollars. Member McCoy. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? One of you left unanimous vote. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, seven members present. Thank you. Thank you, Member McFadden. I make a recommendation. I make a motion. I make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council to fund Golden Rainbow for $69,657. Member McCoy. Member McCoy. Sorry, Member McCoy. <laughs> Look at I that. second the recommendation. All in favor? Let the record show that it's unanimous with seven votes. Member McFadden. I make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council to fund community counseling for one hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. Member McCoy, I second the recommendation. All in favor? Let the record show it's unanimous with seven votes. Member McFadden. I make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council to fund Women's Development Center for eighty-nine thousand one hundred and five dollars. Member McCoy, I second the recommendation. All in favor? Let the record show this is unanimous, seven votes. Member McFadden. I make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council to fund Help of Southern Nevada for two, excuse me, $121,370. Member McCoy. I second the recommendation. All in favor? Let the record show it's unanimous with seven votes. Now we need somebody to make a motion to, pre to move the to present to, or to move the slate as presented forward to the city council for their meeting on April 4th. Uh, Member Miller, I would like to make the recommendation motion. The motion to make the recommendation to move the, to move the slate uh, have to name each one as presented for Hopwap. Huh? Fiscal year. Fiscal year. Twelve thirteen. Member McCoy, I second. Thank you. All in favor? Let the record show it's unanimous with seven votes. Thank you, board members. Uh, I'd like, 
I, I know it's early yet, but I'd like to make a suggestion that we take a quick break just so that we can all sit, take a moment to gather ourselves because CDBG is going to be tough. So, 10? 10 minutes. Let's take, let's take a 10 minute break and we'll all be back here at 225. Member Thank you. Staff, Staff. Sean, would you, I can go back upstairs and rerun these um, spreadsheets. I did not realize that I forgot to sort them for you. Do you want them sorted or do you just want to well, work do you, off of the top? Do you know what I'd like is, is let's, leave, let's leave this one the way it is. Can you bring us one that's sorted by category? Yes. With uh, So that that way we'll be able to, well, all of our categories, if we do, if the board does make a decision to focus on one specific, I'm going to call it a discipline for life of something better, one specific category, then the categories will be grouped together to so have it sort by category and then by score? Yes. Perfect. I think that'll be helpful. And then we'll leave this one as it is on the screen if for us. If it helps the board, I can, we can also um, notate which agencies are direct client services. Please. Okay. That will take you just a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Next Mary. year we're going to do scoring a lot differently. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Threshold is going to get zero funded. That way, we don't even have to discuss them. So we'll figure out. We'll take a look at it, and somebody will make a recommendation saying, "I suggest that anybody who scores underneath 35, which is a ridiculous way, you know, okay. I'm putting that to be out but there." We, but we did. But a we had. But we've had. I mean, I think last year we put our threshold at 73, something like that. And we also, um, um, Reverend McCoy, we also have put caps. So nobody gets over X amount of dollars. So well, X percent. I think we did percentage, not dollar. Percentage. Yeah. Nobody gets more than X percentage of their request, right. Right. so that we can make sure. And so, and so there's we're going to be playing some game. There's some numbers games here that happen, and it's hard. Um, but those, but those, 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 um, those parameters that we put the parameters place really make really have made it smooth. They, they, and they yeah. make it so that they're so that it's not only it's it feels it's easier for us because it feels less subjective. Yeah. But it's also something that I think we can all stand behind because it's 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 a mathematical thing. It's it's, it's a very basic. Yeah. It's not subjective. It's not us voting on our hearts, although our hearts are incredibly involved uh -huh. in this. I mean, oh, I was I was on the I was. Have you guys ever done this? I was on the corner the other. I was sitting at the light, and there's a guy standing there saying veteran with a sign, veteran of foreign wars, 
and, and all of that. And I have the pamphlet in my car from one of the veterans the, groups that gave yeah. the presentation. Oh, and I rolled down the window and I gave him a dollar and I said, you need to call these people. They can help you. They can do all of that. And he's kind of like, I gave him a dollar. I just I'll just love this. But I'm always, you know, if I'm in a if I'm in a mall parking lot and yeah. someone comes up to me and says, Do you have a couple bucks? I said, You need to call two one one. Call two one one, they will get you in touch with services that will help yeah, you find yeah, housing, yeah. help you find a job, do and job. And people training, look at you do like, those things. You know, a horn in your head. Because no, because they think you're a martyr or something because they're like, Well, how do you know this? I said, Look, sweetheart, you forgot to wolf it. So you bring Jesus down. Okay. I'm your angel. Little, little colorful, and I'm like, okay, do what it tells you to do. And then I went over there to the senior food bank, and I just happened to walk in there for a visit, and that lady was sitting there, and she just burst into tears. I don't leave. I just had to leave. Because the lady goes, why is she crying? I'm like, nothing, nothing, nothing. But have any of you guys, have you guys ever read that where you just always want like, do you know how many services that are available in this city? Right. you got to do this. But most honestly, the, when the people are really in need, and you can tell the hustlers. When you tell them call 211, they don't care. But the, the guy, the veteran that I talked to, I mean, you, you could tell that this was a man who'd been through it. You know, this was a man who, 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 had, who, had, who had faced challenges in his life. And uh, that's for you to smack me if I say it. <laughs> um, uh, and, and I think that he was, you know, I, I I, 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 he took the flyer and he said thank you and I think he's gonna you know I think he's gonna look at it because what I found the the guy that I'm dating is, is a veteran served in four wars um, four, four, four wars and he he's always saying to me yeah we don't complain about that we don't we don't talk you know and that's just that's that's the military mindset is you don't complain about your hardships you don't complain if you're in pain that's not that's not how that's just not who you are you just keep doing. So therefore, it's hard to recognize that they need help, and it's hard to ask for it. So, what branch yeah. of the military was he? Army. He was special forces. Oh, they yeah. special forces. So they cross train with us. Oh yeah, he is. He is. Uh, Clark County School District. No, no, with with the court. Because the court is telling about that. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. But he, it was funny. Yeah, you cross train. Well, we knew CCSD was tough. Um, you don't understand what we're going through right now. Mark, you know, Mark, 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 so, what about our guests? Do you guys have any questions about the process so far? I know you've been here before, and I know you've been here before. So funny. I walk in the office, like, I don't even say anything, it's subtle voices. They're like, why are you making it more? Nobody has to walk away here. Yes, it's the agency name staff program name. So it says like the shade tree, the shade tree shelter. She doesn't have them all, all the columns expanded out. So let me. Because we don't have a program called Vi anyway. Because I'm thinking of it. Maybe we can. There's no program called Violence. What program? Is there a program called Violence? There's a program called Violence. What the? There it is. Wait, there it is. She had to open up the space. Yeah. Is there domestics? Is that the French? There we go. Number eight, too, so it just says program. Yeah. Yeah. So it just needs to But it says domestics. No, you did it. Yeah, I know. Maybe you could just. There we go. I saw that, and I wasn't gonna say anything. You know, you're looking and seeing somebody else talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you do 13? I'm working on all of them. Thank you. Let me get there. There we go. Literacy. There's a program that's called literacy. It's not my spreadsheet. Yeah. I don't want to do anything that's going to be the other board. Because 
Yeah, they, they, know they have a to. new policy now. <laughs> Especially with you sick too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you full oh, strength. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I really yeah. love that. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. <laughs> She's not at full power. I have a. Yeah. The about the well, now that they've changed the program, program. 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 program, this is going, you know, I've been writing a book for the last 10 years. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a comedy. And my, one of my girlfriends, she wants to make it a movie. Oh, well, thank she you. She said it would be the funniest movie in the world. I thought about sending one of my guys. I said I better go down. I've always heard of This mom told me. I'll never forget When it comes to my children, I'm God and you will do what I tell you. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's a little better. But I would all right. Now let me just say that I don't follow their rules. And I don't know you, so I'm gonna follow the rules of God. I know. Yeah, I can't get She proceeded to try to curse me out of my own. You would have been so proud of this. You still would have been so proud of Mr. I'm an HOA manager. And we sent a letter out because in one of my condo units, the kids were pounding and pound, they were playing and pounding on the wall and bothering their neighbors. So we sent them a letter. How long have you been on the Well, the, the, the property manager calls me and, and, and says, well, she tells my assistant, uh, this wasn't us, and the letter you sent was illegal. And I'm like, oh, she gets on the phone. And she says, well, the letter that you sent is illegal. For, you know, uh, that the children are protected, are protected, protected class. No. And I said, well, I've attended all of the Federal Fair Housing Act classes, and so, and so you've probably attended more than I have, and I've attended my fair share, and children are protected class, but homeowners have a right to peaceful enjoyment of their property, so if you want to file a complaint with Silver State Fair Housing, you go right on ahead, I can give you their number. <laughs> I don't do that too. And, and she says, well, they have their they have their office. I said, it's their home office. They probably play video games and pay their bills. That's what I do in my home office. Well, they need to have a license for that. Not to pay their bills out of their own, out of their own home. Oh, wow. And I just, I don't, I'm just like, I'm not scared of you. You can throw around that ADA, FHA, I know the laws. She backed right off. I told her, she said, oh, those good. kids, they're in high school, they're only home, they, they, they're in sports, they're only home to sleep and do their homework. So I, said, I, have, they have I said, I have two brothers that would like to bounce a ball off the wall. I said, you don't know what these kids are doing. Oh, they need to be respectful of their neighbors. So, I was just, I was so, I got off the phone and my staff did that. I, was, I love when the parents are the threat to see me. Well, where comes the school? I said, go right ahead. You got those ones with Target. Go right ahead. Well, people want to see that. To me, uh, well, we're going to see the HOA. I said, okay, and the HOA attorney is going to defend the HOA, and that's going to come out of your dues, so you knock yourself out. But when that woman told me she was God, it took me so aback real quick, because I was kind of like, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. And then she was proceeding to cuss me out. So now I'm looking at the child. And the child is sitting there in front of me. And the kid's sitting in front of me, and I'm looking at him. And so I'm refusing to play her game. So she demands a sit down. So she comes in with her son. She comes in with a baby. So now I'm thinking, you know how I am. I'm like, who took this? I'm like, who 
Everybody else has been fully funded. Member McCoy, I second. Uh, if you just delete that, delete that total out, just delete the total out, and we'll give you the total up top. Oh, wait a minute. Why isn't it doing that right? Because she hasn't changed the number of the She hasn't changed the Oh, right, 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 right. right. But that's the exact amount that it would be because she had Right. Okay, so now. Put in that cell for the funds remaining. To put in equals, we'll just put in equals. Oh, no, no. She's got to change the available funding number. Oh, she did. I changed that. I missed that. that. Missed it to leave the equation. The equation got yeah, so what I want you to do is for un uh, where are the funds remaining, where the 16000 is? That should be 16, going to sell or is this 16? Well, the, the problem is that we've removed the, uh, yeah, delete, delete that. Set equals, then go hit um, 1D, now go hit 1D. But those two numbers are the same, so it's not Minus. Minus D2. Yeah. And then go. But go down and highlight or, or double click on uh, D2. And it should tell you what it's D6 summing. D6 to D10. Okay, good. Then we're good. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So do we have a motion to close discussion? Member McFadden. I make a motion that we disclose it. Let me close the discussion on the hot second. Member McCoy? Member McCoy? It's a book next. I second. Thank you. All in favor to close the discussion? Records show it's unanimous with seven. Member McFadden. 
I make a motion that we make a recommendation to the City of Las Vegas that Health of Southern Nevada is $137,600. Thank you, Member McCoy. I second. All in favor? Okay. Let the record show that that's unanimous with all seven board members. Uh, question for the attorney: Do we need to make? Do we need to re-recommend for the others, or are the previous recommendations stand? Because all the previous uh, Terry Ponticello, deputy city attorney, because all the other ones were done by separate motions, if I recall. Yes, they were. That you had only called forward this one motion. In fact, the proper order would have been to be able to reopen that motion to okay. address that motion, and then. And if everybody agreed, and then redo your motion. So, so, do we need to do that, or are we good? You're good. Thank you. Okay, we need a motion to forward the slate as presented to the city council. I amended the motion to forward the slate as for the city. Carmen Member Miller, <clears throat> I would like to make a motion to amend. No, to forward the amended. To forward the, the amended slate of HAPWA applicants to fiscal year, fiscal year 1213 yes. to City Council. Awesome. Second. Member McCoy, second. Excellent. All in favor? Records show that's unanimous with seven votes. Thank you all very much. Thank you, staff. Staff uh, apologizes profusely. Okay, staff, did we get, uh, oh, that's what you left for you. You guys are awesome. Okay, board members, in front of us we have a second set of spreadsheets that was provided to us by staff based on our request at the beginning of the meeting. This second spreadsheet shows our cumulative ratings, but this one is sorted by the category. And what is the staff, what is DS1? Oh, what is the DS on the far right hand column? Uh, direct services. In okay. other words, these agencies that have a number one by them provide direct client services to just homeless clients. Okay. And then as opposed to, for instance, I'm just going to take the first one that's next down on the list, Nevada Legal Services, those are not direct services, those are? They can be considered direct uh, services, however, it's not um, just for homeless clients. Anybody gotcha. that walks in the street receives services from uh, Nevada Homeless Services, or okay. Nevada Legal Services. So you wanted a distinction, so that was how I made that. Perfect. The ones with the number are for strictly homeless clients. Thank you very much. S members, do you have any questions about the new spreadsheet that has come forward? Um, Madam Chair? Staff? Uh, I don't know why it didn't sort by... <coughs> it's okay. It's sorted in reverse Score. order. It did. It's sorted in reverse order. We're good. Okay, swell. Okay. <coughs> leave leave the one on the screen as it is. I think, at least for right now, it'll be easy enough to, for us to resort if we need to. But for right now, let's leave that on the screen. I think having that on the screen, having the different spreadsheet in front of us, may help, may not. We'll find out. Uh, but it might make it easier for our guests that are here today to see as well. So we'll see how that goes. But we know you have the power, so. Okay. okay. Member McCoy, I, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, in the categories on how they have, like, um, the different agencies categorized out, um, in our discussion, is that up for discussion? This is just a general categorization for everybody. Uh, so, like, um, we said that our focus here was predominantly on homelessness prevention. That was a suggestion. That was, that a, was suggestion. a suggestion. There, that's, we, haven't, no, the, we haven't made a decision on that yet. That's just okay. a suggestion. Okay. That's, I want a clarification there. But these categories that, these categories were, I'm going to, Devinder Pappas, I'm going to speak for staff. The categories here were provided for us by staff based on the applications and staff's familiarity with these agencies. That's how, that's how you listed this out for us, or is this something that they self-describe in their applications? It's a combination, shovels for staff. Mayor and Council have given us uh, four areas of priority that uh, they believe are priorities in the city of Las Vegas, and those are homeless prevention, seniors, special needs, youth, and early uh, childhood. 
you will see some changes for next year under homeless prevention as to um, categories that will, uh, our ranking system, mm -hmm. if you will, in the application this year, uh, we did not have that direction, but I believe by next year we probably will. Okay. Which will probably do the same thing that you're attempting to do today. Uh, the categories. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, board members, do we have any comments that we want to open the door with? Member McFadden. Member McFadden, I'll go back to my previous suggestion that um, for this year that we look at the category primarily at the homeless prevention with the distinction of offering the direct service to homeless individuals. Okay. Uh, Dr. Pappas, I have a suggestion just for, just for a thought for the board. Um, we've all discussed probably in our hearts ad nauseum the, the, the great poor organizations that have come before us. I would like to suggest that we at least consider perhaps funding the, the, whoever from the other categories got the highest score so that we're, um, it, it, every little bit helps, um, but uh, that's just, just a thought. We could, we could, of course we can, we have to make hard decisions. We're gonna do this however we can, however we have to, but I'd like to suggest that we at least think about funding one person from seniors, one group from seniors, one group from special needs, and one group from youth and early childhood. Um, whoever, and well, we can do that based on score, just out of straight fairness, so that we can <coughs> spread our incredibly painfully limited funds around. Just a thought, discussion item. Members. Member McCoy, um, I'd like to add something just for discussion as well. And, um, and this was just like, kind of like, an FYI or something I was thinking about when we were talking about homelessness prevention and then you know because it just leaves a slight gray area in my opinion so my suggestion would be that we be open to um, for instance um, is it okay if I like use um, an agency um, here like um, for me the variety early learning center tuition assistance for me I, I didn't exactly see that as youth and early childhood development. I saw that as these are working parents that are trying to stay employed, that are taking their kids and asking for assistance so that they can continue working. Mm -hmm. And if they cannot get that assistance, then we're putting them right back into the homelessness. So for me, that's kind of like, it, it's homelessness prevention in my opinion. So I would like that to be um, open for so your suggestion is that we perhaps change their category for the purposes of our decision today so yes. that we can consider them with the others? Yes. Member is McFadden? that something, are we allowed to make that distinguish? Member McFadden, are we allowed to make that distinguishment? The uh, troubles are staff. You don't have to change the um, categories. The, uh, you can go through as a group before you even make the, um, your recommendations and or your suggestions and as you go through each line item, um, you can have a group discussion as to whether a program is or is not, in your opinion, um, assisting with homeless prevention by virtue of the clients they serve and the services that they provide to those clients. <laughs> so if that's so, helpful. Thank you, Dr. Pappas. I, I would recommend that you do that. So we're not gonna, so basically what you're suggesting is not that we change the category, because the two categories actually kind of already there, but just that it, we can change how we consider, we can discuss how we consider each application. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Member Aslan, I, I just wanna make sure that everybody understands the difference between direct, sir, direct and indirect. All of these things affect um, homelessness and um, there's, there's uh, groups that actually, there's a direct service line to somebody that's homeless already on the street versus somebody <coughs> who could become homeless. And I, and I know that that's, that's the hard part we're doing here, but there's feed somebody that's hungry or somebody that's providing a service that will keep that person from being hungry. And I know in some, a lot of people's minds it's the same thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a direct service versus something that's more indirect. Um, member of a one of the things I had stipulated earlier is, is that in choosing a category such as homeless prevention that we
we are trying to um, take care of basic human needs, and I definitely believe that the Variety Center would be answering the basic human need because we can't work. Right, and I think, uh, Member Aslan, as we go through them, instead of just saying we're not going to, you know, uh, just looking at the homeless category, we can go through each one one by one and make that determination. Dimitri Pappas, and I want to point out, and I'm sure that a lot of our audience would agree with us, taking care of those those basic human needs, making sure that people have a place to lay their head, making sure that they have food to eat, critical, vitally important, but there's also the, the, the layer on top of that, which is not necessarily a direct, that people might not consider it a direct service, but there's there's the, the counseling that's going to that's going to help them get to a mental place or a skills based place where they can move out of this transition. So it's it's challenging. We've got we've got a lot to we've got a lot to consider and a lot to talk about and unfortunately not unlimited to time to do this. So does who wants to open discussion? Member Aslan. Um, just as a starting point, can we maybe look at a cap? Um, a percentage cap on what we're going to do have a percentage cap on what we're going to uh, well, I was looking at some of the requests that are right around 100,000, and if we looked at maybe a cap of uh, 45,000, that would cap it off there, and then work downward from there between 15 and 45. Well, Devinder Pappas, what I would suggest is rather than basing it on dollar figure, we would base it on um, a, we could decide that we're going to, that, that the maximum we will give somebody is 75% of their request. That way, the larger agency that may be asking for $100,000 is not getting penalized by being cut back to, from 45000 and the smaller agency that's only asking for forty could potentially get their most. I'd, per, I'd suggest that we do it based on a percentage of their request as opposed to a hard dollar figure. And do the same thing for the bottom. We also, in the past, to make this discussion, this painful discussion easier, we have set a minimum threshold for those applicants that scored below this score, they're going to be zero funded. We don't even discuss them. Um, and uh, one of the benefits for me for that is that we do spend a lot of time interviewing these clients. We do spend a lot of time going through the scoring process, which is imperfect. We all know that. But those scores do matter. And I think we need to use them as the tool that they are to help us determine who is going to be funded. If you guys want to move your chairs back here, It'll be tight, but there's room. I saw somebody just got up so they could get a better look. Oh, if you want, okay. Thank you, um, the just don't hit me. Uh, so I so I would suggest that before we do member Aslan's, we decide what our minimum threshold is going to be, and then we can determine what our maximum percentage threshold is going to be, and then that'll give us a lot of room to work with. I think. Yeah. <coughs> member McFadden. Of the three or four suggestions you had, I really make a suggestion because I think all of them kind of complement each other that we could incorporate all of them to some respect, you know, and have one person from each category um, to talk about basic human needs with variety, you know, and we can discuss the cap issue and, and still have our basis on Absolutely. basic human needs. Staff, staff. Yeah. Uh, Staff. The um, member Bolster, or staff member uh, Sean Bolster, the only um, issue you're going to have with that is we have a minimum of 15000 Correct. So your agencies that request 15000 have, we'll have to, to bring them up. You have to bring them up. So it's if they're to, going to be included. If they're included. Um, in the past, your scoring threshold was 65 points, and at this time, there's only one agency that did not receive. There's only one agency that received less than 65. 65. So do we have a recommendation from the board on what the minimum threshold we should consider is? Chair, uh, before you do that, in, I would su suggest that in order to incorporate all of the discussions that I've heard you say, go through these agencies line by line and decide the indirect that are working with the um, area that you're looking at. 
See, I, I don't agree. No. I think okay. I would I would prefer that we look at the minimum score first and okay. then do that with the remainder. But uh, that's I'm not you know we're committee, so that's Your up to the, the board. Lowest score after 54. The next highest score appears to be 71. Yeah. Tammy, can you show? Can you tell me how many applications scored 80? 80 points or higher. So there's 18 applications that scored 80 points or higher. I'm looking at there's a count on the bottom right hand corner of the corner of the screen. So there's 18 that scored 80 points or higher. Can you tell me how many scored 70 points or higher? Okay, 75. <coughs> Give me the 75 as the threshold, please. You want 75 to be the threshold? Yes, please. That's what I saw. Okay, okay so 75 good. is, no, that gives me. That's okay. You're saying the threshold is the percentage. The minimum threshold. The minimum threshold of points. No, of points is 75. Okay. How many have 75 points or higher? like 33 have so we have 18 that are 80 points or higher 33 that are 75 points or higher let's get back down to the 70s let's see where the scores are in the 70s go up a little bit start above 75 and show me what the scores between 75 and 80 are a little higher 76, 77, 78. Um, I think I think 33. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to make the money spread. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Uh, Sean, can, staff, can you please verify that our funding is at um, 400? And, as far as we know, 485,000 18 dollars. As far as we know, I double check this again. 485,018. Thank you. If we stay with our threshold at 75, which is 33 applications, that puts us giving everybody exactly equal, equal divisions gives us under our threshold. So we cannot do the threshold of 75. Um, so, guys, what threshold do you want to try? And we're asking, can, can we do a, a 78? Let's see. Not no, it's not necessarily. Let's try. Let's try. See how many we have. Seventy-eight and above. Tammy, please. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Our spreadsheet queen. That's okay. That gives us 23. That'll give us, that'll make it so that at least we're not going to go below our minimum threshold where we to do an even division. I would like to, I'd like, does anybody want to make a motion that we make our minimum threshold number of points 78 points? Talking, we're look, right now we're looking at the rating averages. So anybody below 78? Would, would, would automatically be zero funded. Member McCoy? Um, I would like to see what those numbers look like at 76, please. Thank you. And I'd like to, while, while Tammy's doing this, I want to remind everybody that 
the numbers that we're when we're looking at when I'm talking about the 33 that were scored 75 or higher, not all of those 33 necessarily meet the recommendation that we're considering of homeless prevention. So some of those might be excluded because of their, if we do decide to vote based on categories, some of those will be excluded. So we're not necessarily looking at that number. It just gives us a place to start from so that we aren't having to sift through every application on here. Okay, thank you for that. So it looks like we're looking at 30? Yes. 30 at 76. That would give us, if we gave everybody an equal percentage, and assuming all 30 would be eligible, that would give us $16,167 per. And I'm sorry again, how many did we have at 78? 78 was 23. 20, 75 was 33. There were 23 at 78. 78 was 23. It was 23. 78 was 23. 76 is 30, 75 is 33. And 80 was 18. 80 was 18. Keeping in mind again that we're going to eliminate some of those, we're probably going to eliminate some of those based on category. Okay. Member, Member McCoy. Member McCoy, just for clarification, so some of those that were eliminated, then we can't go back and do, we just allocate those funds. Um, to maybe somebody else that might have been on the list. I'm, I'm just really trying to understand. What that we, we haven't made any, we have not made any suggestions or recommendations for funding yet. This is to give us a place to start. So you have you you have your scoring sheets where you might have made recommendations, but those haven't been presented to the board yet. So basically, what we're doing is, if we if we were to agree on a minimum threshold based on the rating averages, then we would be recommending that everybody who falls below that, below that okay. threshold would be zero funded. That would be the recommendation. Um, and we did have one case last year where a member brought, brought one of those cases back up. But again, part of the reason that I'm suggesting we do this is um, these are very, very hard decisions and this takes some of the emotion out of it. This makes it so that we can not, we'll never feel good about it, but it's something that we can stand behind. And, um, and just, I, I hate using the word justify, but yeah, it's something that we can stand behind and explain. Mm -hmm. So, remember, we need zero funds, and one we have to give the record why we have to give a specific statement about why we're zero funding it. And the methodology that we're trying to establish will deal with one, of course, the lack of funds. It also can uh, be brought up anything that a member feels that doesn't align with um, what the grant's asking for, um, such as I'll use an example. Let's say an organization is just really hasn't established a funding history for us to, to, to make a fair, balanced suggestion. So, you know, and you would put that in your statement because we want to be zero funded, we have to make a statement for you. Right, and in the past, to Vendor Peps, in the past we actually had a couple agencies that didn't come to the meeting, and so that would be, we, we, we explained that that's part of the reason they were zero funded, because they didn't come to the meeting. I'm using that as an example, because that didn't happen this year. Thank you, staff. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, this, and this just helps us give that, give that explanation. For the ones that fall below that threshold, if the board votes to do that, then we can say, because of their scoring, that that's why they were zero funded, and we don't necessarily have to go item by item. It. So it makes it a little bit easier on us for point that point as point. well. So just for clarification, point. 78 is the percentage is no. the score no. we're looking at now? Well, we're waiting for somebody to make a motion. 75% 70 less gave us 33 candidates, 76% left us 30, 78 gave us 23, and 80 gave us 18. Before you, uh, Sean Bolzer staff, before you make your final to do that, do you want to make a suggestion to look at how that works for you before you vote to zero fund anyone under that? You mean, have you, have you guys heard the categories based on? In other on words, I don't know that you know all the agencies that are right. in, in that are in that, that group. Group. Right. So well, when I'm that looking helps. When I'm looking at my spreadsheet, we would only be, we'd be eliminating two of 
we'd be limiting two of the of the category one homeless preventions. So we actually do have that on our spreadsheet here. If we can take a, if we take a look at them, I'm just looking at these telephones. If we did study them, so um, yeah, we can definitely just. Do you guys want to have Tammy sort the applications for us? Okay, so I'd like it sorted by by average score and then by category. No, that's not right. Because I'm in Zoom and I can't help. Because yeah. It doesn't do it like that. So <coughs> let my brain let my brain process this for a second. We want it sorted because we've already got it sorted by score. So that's not going to help us. Okay, I know. Take the subset of the 78 rating 78 and higher. Just grab those and sort them by category for us. And then do the same thing for the ones lower than 78, so we can see who might be in our in our suggested category that's being eliminated. Does that work? Okay. Let's look at 78 and higher. Sort that subset by category. And then do the same thing for 70, for, for lower than 78. Sort those by category so we can see who's being included and who's being excluded. Thank you, ma'am. She brought me all She brought me all the cookies. I did not need three dozen cookies. That subset, take that top subset, switch the sort order so that it'll sort by category, so that it'll sort category alphabetically so the homeless stuff will be at the top. So it starts with homeless. No. No, grab that, grab that subset, grab that 23 records. And then when that dialog box came up, you could change the sort order. So drag down to. So patient. Exactly. Do you mind? Because no, not at all. Because I'm not sure exactly what you want. That's okay. We have already just for a second.
sort. Well, that column, that smallest largest is for column D, which is the ratings. So, oh, that should be largest to smallest. And then that should be Hey, there we go. Okay. So, people, if we come up here, so now what we're looking at here is um, we have it sorted by, by rating and then by category. So you'll see that most of our top rated ones are homeless prevention. Nope, that's the thing so right. Yeah, but that 81 right there, that seniors. 81 should have been, oh, oh that's seniors, it. okay, yeah. good, okay, so we have 15, or we have 10, we have 10 applications that meet our homeless prevention criteria that um, are above our threshold, and then we've got the other categories there, <coughs> so that we can determine, Mm -hmm. Did it keep the distinction over to the side for you? The DS? Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Would, no, it didn't because the, the spreadsheet she worked off was spreadsheet on your spreadsheet's upstairs. So this wasn't yes, on there. But we have it. Oh. We have it, so we'll know. Member McCoy. Um, I'd like to motion that we make the threshold at 76 and above. <coughs> Okay, we have a motion on the table to make our minimum funding threshold 70, average rating 76. Do we have a second? I'll second so we can open discussion. Then we will have a second. Thank you. Discussion? I ask a question. Is that just a place that 76 for a category or for all categories? For all categories. Yeah, but it's just safe. Oh, I, I, if she can't knock it out, I can knock it out real quick. Um, so we have a motion and a second. We're open for discussion. The motion is to make our minimum funding average rating 76. 76. Discussion? Member McFadden, I just think we're trying to stretch ourselves way too thin there. Meaning when you, that when you take the number down, should be higher or lower? Um, the same or higher. Okay. Any other discussion? Just clarification. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is 78, right? This is the, what we're looking at right now is 78. 78. She's she's gonna she'll get it to the 76 course, but we know for 76 that it's a total of 30 applications, but not all 30 are going to meet that homeless prevention criteria. I so. Would um, staff to scroll through slowly through these? <coughs> through this to see the Do you want her to start? Do you want her to start at no, the one? Just, just the, the way bottom. It's oh, okay. Not, just the way it is. I just want okay. to see the limitations. Uh, Divider Pappas. We can't see all of them. We can't see all of them. Yeah, it would be minuscule if you put the whole screen up there. No, I understand. Uh, Divider Pappas. I think 76 is a good threshold for us to work from. Um, the only, you know, it's, it's, it gives us a place to start, and it does not mean that everybody who has a score of 76 or higher is going to be funded. That is not what it means. It just gives us a place to start from, and it, and it, gives us a, a conversation point. Um, so I don't have a problem with, with the motion that's on the table. Does anybody else have discussion? All right, then I'm gonna call for a vote. All members in favor of making our minimum threshold 76. All in favor? That's four in favor, opposed? Three opposed, motion carries. Do you need a, do you want me to help you get that, Tammy? I think I got it. Okay. Um, so we now have a minimum threshold, 
And when we make our recommendations at the end of the program, whoever's making the recommendations will can make one motion for everybody who has below 76, that they be zero funded due to the scoring that they receive on their application. We'll, but we will do the other ones as individual motions. <coughs> Next up, do we want to discuss, how do we want to sort our remaining 33, uh, sorry, 30 applications? Is there any discussion? Does anybody want to make, start making recommendations? What do we want to do here? Ms. Can I make a recommendation that we, we stay with the categories, <coughs> um, but possibly go down through, um, based on the previous suggestion, go down and look at the top ones and the, for the other three categories? For the other three categories, because we can, if we can <coughs> knock those out, we can um, kind of shrink up a little bit. Okay, Defender Pappas, what we have on the spreadsheet that staff brought us earlier that is sorted by category. So that's going to help us out a bit with that. The category on, or the agency under special, or excuse me, the agency under seniors that scored the highest was Rebuilding Together, SMV, Rebuilding Day, Senior Repair. Mm -hmm. They scored 81.43 and their request is for $31,250. The group under special needs that scored the highest was Foundation for Positively Kids, the Early Intervention for Development Disabled Children. They scored 87.67 and their request was for $40,000. And under Youth Early Childhood, Spread the Word Nevada Kids to Kids Literacy scored the highest with 83.14. Their request was for $35,000. Discussion on those three? Any recommendations? I'd like to get the ball rolling. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna get the ball rolling. This is obviously not a final thing. I said, let's put down on the system uh, the minimum that we can give them, which is fifteen thousand dollars. So I suggest that we fund rebuilding together of Southern Nevada, rebuilding day senior repair in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars. I suggest that we fund Foundation for Positively Kids Early Intervention for Fund Developmentally Disabled Children in the amount of $15,000. I know we made it hard for you by sorting. I'm sorry, Tay. Tell me when you're ready for the next one. Right now we're in special needs, and their score was 87.67, if that helps. And rebuilding the seniors. And what was your recommendation? 87. Right now I'm just opening the conversation with the minimum we can give them, which is $15,000. And the third is for youth early childhood. Their score was 83.14. Spread the word Nevada Kids to Kids. I suggest we fund them in the amount of $15,000. Okay. Never mind that. I'd like to make a suggestion that we go back up to um, homeless prevention. Okay. But before we do that, just for purposes of voting, um, take the uh, suggestion of Member McCoy with the Variety Early Learning Center and, and recategorize them. Well, just change. for purposes of as of, and indicate that they are your service. Excellent. We should we should follow staff's, staff's suggestion and take a look at the other ones that are not currently under that homeless prevention to see if we want to agree to consider them as as part of underneath this homeless before we start making recommendations for the homeless. So, um, so are all the rest of the categories is that what you want to do line by line or? Well, yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's right now the way she's got it sorted. Go ahead and scroll all the way up to line five for me, Tammy. Can I make a point of staff. order for staff that the suggestion came from your group discussion? Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you, staff. Um, 
Uh, so go ahead and scroll down. I'm looking for the first category that's not homeless prevention that we haven't already funded. Yeah, but we've already funded, we already made a recommendation or a suggestion. So it, let's look at family. Uh, we go down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Nope. Uh, there was one up far, farther up. Didn't I see one farther up? No. Okay. Then we're looking at the lead discovery children's museum youth works. I actually totally agree with that category. I think that's where that, that belongs. Okay. Board members, do you want to make a, a, a recommendation or a suggestion to consider that as part of the homeless? Right now we're looking at Lead Discovery Children's Museum Youth Works. Okay, moving down to Nevada Partners Inc. Summer Education Program. Okay, skipping down to the Jewish Federation of Las Vegas Senior Lifeline Program. No. Okay, Variety Early Learning Center Tuition Assistance. Yes. Okay, um, I'm not sure how we're going to do this to make this easy on Tammy. <laughs> um, she could just go and recategorize it for the purpose of the decision to, to the homeless HP right. direct service. Um, the, yeah, the, for, for, thank you. Uh, Defender Pappas, for our purposes today, let's just go ahead and change that category to, to homeless prevention. Foundation for an Independent Tomorrow, John, oh, that's already homeless prevention. Okay, go on down. Uh, community counseling center. Can you expand that? Can you expand that so we can see what the program name is? Yes, it is disorders. That is the disorders. That is the disorders. Yes. Open up the co-occurring disorders. Co-occurring. That's the co-occurring disorder. Okay. Um, you know, I do think that that follows under falls under the homeless prevention. Those co-occurring disorders, you could have um, alcoholism and a mental problem that are preventing these people from going out and finding gainful employment from moving forward. I do think, I do think that if that is this program, let me double check that. I've got it right here. It is. It is? Okay. Then that's. Um, then I would argue. I would like to pro to suggest that that does belong, that we could fit that under homeless prevention, but it would not be. Um, what was it? Direct, direct services. services. Because they do offer services to others beyond homeless. Member McCoy. So, so we'll we'll put that under homeless prevention, but we just recognize that it's not direct services. Does that have to be a vote or just have to be a change? Good. Okay, so these are all suggestions. There's this, a suggestion. I would suggest that the agencies that you are going to consider, I know it's a little bit more work for um, Tammy, change the name to direct client so that because we know who's under what category by virtue of the way the applications were submitted. Oh, we I get it. We can correct that once we go back Okay, upstairs. I get it. So <laughs> we can, because the colors aren't really working that well. They look kind of, they're, they're hard to see. Oh, so okay. Just change I, the name. Okay. I got you, Tammy. So Tammy, go ahead and change this one to homeless prevention. And I'm going to take you up to the top and I'll tell you which ones to change to direct services for me. Okay? So when you're to the top. Okay. Um, let me just put direct services. <coughs> yeah, just change it to change the change it from homeless prevention to direct services, because then we'll know what that means. Again, this is just for our services to, for our purposes today. Um, Women's Development Center, yes, direct that's that's direct services. Direct services. Yeah, all the way up to safe house. Um, resident empowerment is is direct services. Foundation stays the same. Lutheran is direct services. Blind Center, oh no, okay, so, uh, wait. United States. That's direct services. Okay, Salvation Army Vocation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, uh, no wait, isn't that, yeah, that's listed as direct services. Um, SAFE is definitely direct that's services. Yes. Spread the word, no. no. Uh, keep, okay, Variety, oh, we did that one ourselves. Yeah, Foundation for an Independent Tomorrow, that is not. So that stays homeless prevention. Community Counseling Center stays homeless prevention. Help of Southern Nevada, that is uh, direct services. No. Family Bob Bravis is direct services, thank you. Clark County, uh, 
uh, help of Southern Nevada Shannon West. That's direct services. Latin Chamber mm -hmm. is not oh, direct no. services. No. Catholic Church Public Restaurant. Public Restaurant is direct services. Catholic Church Public Restaurant is direct services. Uh, Nevada, Nevada Legal Services. Legal Services is not direct no. services. Okay, so can we resort just 76 and above? Resort them by category now, please. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Never are these, do these, <coughs> excuse me, I thought these were the scores 76 or 78 and above? 76. Should be 76 and above because that's what we made a motion on. So she's going through and she's going to resort that just those groups for us. <laughs> All right, Nevada Legal Services. So that she was she we just went straight down the line. I was just so oh, okay. yeah, we just did okay. everything. But for right for the for oh, us right now. So right now I'm gonna first sort by ratings. That's correct. D and then and then G is the categories. Perfect. And it's sort okay, that's it. And you only sorted seventy eight and above, right? Seventy six. Seventy six and above. Thank you. Thank you, Member McCoy. Okay, good. So now let's, um, so we have established our minimum threshold and we have gone through and evaluated our, applica our applicants to determine whether they offer direct services for the homeless um, or the homeless or other homeless, for, for homeless prevention, assuming that we're going to stay with our focus on homeless prevention. So working on that assumption, let's go all the way back to, to number to the first one. Do we want to start from the top or the bottom, guys? Remember McCoy? Okay. Not to have my helmet too tight and get you slow, but can you just repeat what you just said all over again, what our main yes. focus is going to be on? <coughs> yes. Um, just the, again, me, we have made a motion and agreed that we will only, uh, that we are only going to be making decisions on uh, programs. I'm looking for the right word there on programs that received a rating of 76 or higher. So that's, we know we're going to zero fund everybody who got a rating lower than 76. We have gone through and evaluated our categories to make sure that we are in agreement on which of the remaining applicants provide either direct services for homeless prevention. Um, what's the other kind of services called? Indirect mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. Indirect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> indirect mm -hmm. services for homeless prevention or if they fit one of the other three funding categories that the city has directed us, mandated us to pay attention to. And we have sorted those remaining 30, 20, nope, those remaining 30 applications based on the now agreed upon category for them so that we can determine who offers those direct services on the expectation that we are going to attempt to focus our funding dollars on the homeless challenge that the city of Las Vegas is facing right now. Did that work for you? It did. So, um, Member McCoy, so the, the preference is homelessness prevention, then seniors, then special needs, and then early childhood? Or are, 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 there's no specific order? Because I just need clarification for myself, please. Um, or staff, Mayor and Council did not provide us with a, um, a preference as to how the categories were to be broken out <coughs> or funded, they believe that That's on those us. are the needs for the community. Okay. Member McFadden. Member McFadden, we had the discussion earlier, a suggestion to um, take one from each category, and those are the, the categories that we have given 15,000 to as a starter. It's the top score in each of the categories that isn't direct services or homeless prevention. So really, um, I would like to make a suggestion that we um, we start with categories by the direct services and homeless prevention. Those, that's already been done. Um, and right now, this what you're looking at is, scored, is, is sorted first by score and then by category. So you want the remaining 76 and above sorted by category, then by score? Correct. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, category. Category is at 76. At 76. If you want to go ahead and like color code everybody who's below 76, just like shade them all one color so we know that 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 we've made a decision on those. Um, I feel like 
we're doing budgets for my homeowners from A to Z. Yeah, you want A to Z, you want sorted by A to Z, but I think you can. Oops. Okay. Undo. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love the undo button. Um, when I had done this initially, I didn't have the, I didn't include the header bar. So that's why it's sorted the header bar in there. So you just need to check the checkbox when you go to sort to include that there's a header. Okay? Oh, that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. I actually love spreadsheets. I'm a, I'm a total story. I love them. Everything that we're not going to do, just gray that, do something so that when we look up, we don't get confused because you know how easily confused I am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's head all the way up to our first. Suggestion that based on the screen that we 100% <clears throat> find the shade tree. Or did you want to do the? Um, nope, we're the, we're opening the ball. We're we're let, get the ball rolling. You do your thing. Suggest. 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 And we make a suggestion. We also 100% find women's development center. Did we <coughs> discuss doing? We did not. What that was that was something that we were going to come back to. So, Member Aslin, did you want to make a make a motion that we suggest a there or that we that we agree that nobody gets funded fully that we uh, that we don't fund any more than X percentage as long as the dollar figure does not fall below our minimum threshold of fifteen thousand. Yes. What percentage would you like to propose? Um, Yeah, I was thinking 75 would 75 as the maximum at this point, just to see where we fall. Okay, so go ahead and make a motion. You don't have to make a motion. No, well, we're, okay, yeah, but a suggestion. So, Tammy, can you put in what 80 percent of the funding for each one of those, please? Mm -hmm. like you to do once you've changed the font size on that Tammy is let's go through and let's make sure that nobody's under 15,000 and if they are we bring them up to the 15,000 minimum. Okay. So let's make sure nobody's under. Looking good. Oh, raise that take family promise, I suggest that we take, or it's not a suggestion yet, we're just doing it, so just bring that one up to 15,000. Okay, good, we just had that one suggestion. Now do me a favor, Tammy, please take the totals for just, Oh, I see. Okay. go ahead and take the, uh, I, I'd like to suggest that for discussion purposes today, take the total, the 80, 75? 75% total <laughs> under remarks, move it over to the to the recommended column, and I'd like to see what the total is for the direct services plus those other three that we've agreed to fund. So you just want me to copy and paste those to the recommended? Exactly. 
said before you do that, Tam, and um, tell, go into your numbers and make that uh, no um, decimal points. It'll mess up your, uh, yeah, it'll mess it up. It just format the whole column, just go to F, just click on, there you go. Click on the F at the top, right click and go to format. And you're going to go to, there currency. we go, currency. currency. And no, no, yeah. not, no decimal places. There you go. Okay? <coughs> just direct services. We're going to do just direct services for right now. Well, direct services and the three that we've already made a recommendation, that's a already, suggestion. But that's already in the call. Oh, that's already in the call. Good call. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I don't like it when it tells you that. <laughs> okay, so we did 80%, that works. Okay, so that leaves us right now, if we were to make the recommendation to move this slate forward as it presents, right now we're $72,000 over budget. So, we're not going to be able to give everybody 80% of their recommendation. So this is where, uh, no, the math was done at Annie. Um, this is where we're going to have to look at the scoring. Member McFadden. I'm <coughs> struggling with 80%, um, especially when we had some really large requests this yeah. year. Yeah. I think that we need to, to modify that. Okay, do you want to make a suggestion? Let's, do you want to take a look at 75%? 70. I think, I think 60. No, well, keep in mind that we're talking about, you're talking about the, the maximum, you, we're talking about the maximum we're going to be able to give. So if we follow this recommendation, then for our group that scored the highest, for our agency that scored, <coughs> I have way too many spreadsheets in front of me. Me too. Um, for, for Shade Tree, which scored 94.13, you're talking about giving them 60% of their no more than 60% of their recommendation. Remember, this is this is just someplace to just, just start know, from. I know, but I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm understanding you. I kind of like last year, I think we did it just a dollar cap, and it was like 50,000. It's a dollar seven. cap is too hard because some of these agencies are only asking for 15,000, and some of them are asking for 50. And we, I think this, I think if we work from the scores here, remember asking. Well, can can I make way. a suggestion that um, for the, those who scored the direct services that scored 90 or above, we fund them 90%, and the ones that scored below 90, we fund them 75%. How about, why don't, why don't we do, why don't we do my favorite, my favorite math thing here? Most, score them by their rate, by their score. Give yeah. them up the percentage based on their score, and see, yeah. and let's see how that does. Right. So equals that times that, and just take it down, and see, what we get. and see what we get. And that way they're getting rewarded. No, no, do it, do equals, do right, but do equals equal, equal forty three. Equal that times nine, and then and then do that column percent. And hit it, and then just drag that straight down. But do you want to put that in the recommended? Well, it's just we're, we're just doing remarks right now. It's just for the math. So if you just right, so if you just drag it straight down for all the direct services, okay. it'll Not do the just math. 90%. Just oh, yeah, because it's one over ninety. No, we want to do it we're, right now. We're going to do it by their score. Okay. But right now, we're going to so do it by their score. Their score is their percentage. Their score is their percentage. So now move that over to the recommended column and let's see what our total looks like. Because then they're getting rewarded. Then they're getting rewarded and they're getting recognized for the scores that they earned. By by doing their application, by coming in and meeting with us, um, doing the doing the whole deal, <coughs> and of course, all of this is still open. If you just click on the first one, it'll just fill in the rest. Okay. Can you tell I'm a little pushy? Great. Now we're on hundred thousand. <laughs> Except that it did the decimal points again. Right. So we just need to. 
decimal points aren't going to kill you. Well, it does throw the numbers off a little bit. It does throw the numbers off a little bit. <laughs> Not on the record. Okay. She's doing a good job here. She deserves it. So, board members, let's talk. All right. So, what we've got up here now is purely based on their scoring percentages. And direct purely based, services. exactly. And direct services. And direct services. Okay, so we're not doing we have we're not doing a percentage of that yet. This is based on their requested amount and their score. Correct. Now what we could okay. do is now we could go in right and go eighty percent. Right, Defender Pappas, we could take those totals now and multiply those totals by eighty percent. And see where we're and at. And then see where we're at. That's but again, they're still getting they're still they're still being they're still being rewarded for their score. Remember, McFadden, if we're talking about rewarding for scores, then I think we leave the Alone. Then we need to, then let's do it by for starting at the third, starting at anybody who scored ninety or lower. We will take their that dollar figure that's right there and multiply it by seventy-five. By seventy-five? Or just the direct client and direct services? Just direct client. Just direct, just excuse me, just direct services. Ah, no, put that back. I'll do because you need that number. Do you want to put So the next column no, question. under remarks equals Equals that number, the first one, uh, E1, E5, E7, E7. Tell me what you want. And I'll, and I'll you want that 85 to 13. No, I mean, you want 75% you want of the, the direct of, of, the, of what's currently under recommended. Oh, okay. That's okay. <coughs> it's all about communication. It's all about making people <laughs> talk to people. <laughs> You're making your head talk. Oh, I so owe her a drink. You can't say that on the record. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, so owe you a, I so owe you a soda. <laughs> I'd like a drink. I received. Okay, now wait. Now you've got to copy. Now you've got to copy and paste those so that they're not the formulas anymore because then, then when you eliminate the first one, copy and paste do special. copy and then paste special as values. I do love spreadsheets. We do. We just went to seven. Oh, it was just ninety percent. Audience, thank you for bearing with us for this. Two thousand over. We have eighteen thousand to give back. <laughs> <laughs> You've got agencies now that are not at your fifteen thousand dollars minimum. Oh, let's bring those. In. Thank you very much. Let's bring those ones that are not at our minimum up and see how much we have. Yes. Yeah, so family farm is close to fifteen. I would like to suggest that we distribute that money, those monies, to the three agencies that we are funding that are outside the homeless prevention so that we can, because um, they did score well, they did score higher. So I'd like to suggest that we give 3000 to make 18000 for each of the three agencies, the top three scoring agencies under seniors, special needs, and youth early childhood. Hang on a second. <laughs> yes? I'm sorry, um, maybe it's just me, I'm, I'm confused here. It says recommended grant award, Variety Early Learning Center. 
we've got recommended over in remarks, but we have nothing in there. It's because they're not under direct services. They're not under direct services, oh, so we're okay. not making a recommendation for them at this time. Mm -hmm. That's not to say we won't, but that we're not but at this that, time. They don't have a suggestion. Well, I thought you put them under direct. There was a couple of them. No, we put, put them under homeless prevention, not direct. Right. Thank you. Right. And, we've, and we have determined, based on this recommendation as it stands at this exact moment, that we're going to that we're going to fund everybody under direct services and, and talk about the rest. So why don't just to make things clear, why don't we delete everything under all of the dollar figures on remarks for everybody else, just so that it's a little clearer for, for members. Okay. So let's go back up, and I would like to suggest that for the three agencies that we are that we that I have suggested that we fund that are not under the homeless prevention direct services category that we up their recommendation from the 15,000 to 18,000 and we'll do the same thing for family promise of Nevada family promise of Las Vegas mm -hmm. uh, Madam chair yes point of reference you cannot overfund an agency family promise only oh thank you 15, perfect thank you well, all these numbers so let's go down and look at those other three and bring their recommendations up to 18,000 we can, we can okay. yeah we can change everything and there's a Member McCoy. <laughs> this is, I know. This is all for okay. So Member need, McCoy. 18. I, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I guess I want some clarification because when we look at um, direct services under homelessness, homeless prevention, it seems like there are lots of those agencies that kind of do the same thing. So, in my opinion, it seems that we are awarding. I'm not saying they duplicate services, but they have a lot of similar services. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are other categories of people like um, senior medicine or, you know, home shelters that are, are getting no funding. Okay. So in my mind, it just doesn't make sense that we are continuing to give similar agencies all the funding because they score it well versus. Okay. Then, then make what, feel free to make any suggestions because we can change this back and forth a million times until, we, until we're done, we're done. So, so I'd love to. <laughs> I don't want us to do it a million <laughs> times, Member McCoy. But go ahead, Member McFadden. Now's the time, because I have the same concern with some of these. I think that what I'd like to suggest, because there's a couple that we moved specifically so they'd be in homeless prevention, like the variety. So you can make a suggestion on some of the amount requested that it um, maybe be reallocated to um, variety, which was one of the ones that we reallocated. So if you'll scan up just a little bit, Tammy, for an example. Um, okay, let's take Health of Southern Nevada. I would like to make a suggestion that we take $15,000 out of Health of Southern Nevada, the Shannon West Youth well, Center. I'll make them 32, And move that 15000 to a variety early. 32, Does that make sense? This is where we start, this is where the negotiations start, Ms. Member, Member McCoy. This is where it gets fun and hairy. Um, three, two, eight, three, three. Because it was five, seven, so we're moving to 15 with eight, three, two, eight, three, three. And then you're proposing that we give the 15,000 to Variety. You're suggesting that we give the 15,000 to Variety Learning Center? Okay, members? Um, I'm going to look back and see what Shannon West Youth Center does again. Um, staff? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Shannon, um, what was the question, Shannon West Youth Center? Uh, member McCoy wanted to know what they do. They provide uh, direct uh, housing to um, homeless youth overaged foster children. So when a foster child turns 18 and is kicked out of the system and has nowhere to go, that's where they go. Member McFadden? And just because one of us has made a suggestion, feel free to change we, that. We don't take it personally. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Devinder Pappas, I'd like to suggest that we take another look at the Catholic Charities Public Restrooms application. They didn't score as, as highly as, as I'm, I'm surprised they didn't score as highly as, as I would have hoped. But when we talk about basic, core basic needs, when we talk about those basic human needs, 
none of us ever think about. Their score is 74.56. Mm -hmm. That helps tremendously. Yeah, they're going to be up to that. They're under direct services, so they'll be at the top. Um, the, when we talk about those, those core basic human needs, none of us ever think about being in a public place, being someplace where you're surrounded by people and not having any place where you can go relieve yourself, wash yourself. I mean, we talk about a basic human need. So while I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed by their score, uh, I would very much like to, oh shoot, there, we can't, we made, well, we haven't made a motion yet. No, no. I would like to, I would like to suggest <laughs> that we fund the public restrooms program. Um, and I'd like to suggest that we that we fund them in the amount of twenty thousand dollars, and that we do need to ungrade it for us and move it up if you could, or maybe not move it up, just ungrade it. The history reminds me at least it's the only one, only it is. it is the only one I believe, and not only just relieving yourself, just to freshen up. I mean, if an individual has to go to a, a job interview or something and just needs to do some because I think they have yeah, some facilities that they can clean themselves up to and it's the only one. Um, well, um, it's, 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 you, you talk about basic human dignity not having a place to do yeah. it's, So that's, that's. Okay, you're right, Fred, I think that still falls within our goal. Because it is, it is a direct service, service, even though it's below our voting threshold. I agree. Member McCoy, for clarification, um, in the homeless shelters that we have, that we um, have made suggestions to, um, and, and I don't know this, and I pray to God I don't have to know it, but do they not have the ability to use any of those facilities at all? Um, are they out there homeless? Because in, in my opinion, how I saw that personally is that we have all these organizations that are out here to take them off of the street. And for me, it seems like we are enabling them by providing them the services to stay on the street versus trying to get them to participate in um, these organizations that are often homeless, you know, for them a place to absolutely. stay and a shower. So I, I absolutely understand what you're saying. And but the problem is, is because we have <coughs> such a huge increase in our homeless problem, if every, from what I understand, from what I've read, if every um, applicant out there took maxed out, there's not enough room. So there still will be individuals that, you know, if, if we had every one of these um, applicants taking the maximum number of people they could and housing them as best they could, it's still not enough. And Devinder Pat, I'm sorry, no. Mayor Roslyn. I was just going to make a comment that it, it's possible that the score is low for the public restrooms because the question was posed if they had gone to the local businesses that they were actually, that were, that were benefiting from this and they hadn't, they hadn't gone out and um, solicited donations from those close businesses. I think that, that kind of affected, their score. affected the score possibly because we want people to go out they don't, we don't want them to just come to us. We want them to go out, and these restrooms are located in an area that benefit some pretty Absolutely. nice facilities. So that was one of the things for me that I had hoped that they would come back next year and say, we, we've we gone to these local businesses and we've tried to bring in funds for that. Well, well that's, just, that's just a point. That's not a justification. And I just want to sneak something into Vendor Pappas. A lot of these homeless shelters close during the day. You have to be out by 7 o'clock in the morning, and you can't come back until 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock at night. So if you don't even have a place to relieve yourself during those hours, that's the major part of this, this facility. And there's also a number of homeless people that will not go to shelters. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and, and, and some of them are psychological. There's, there's all kinds of reasons for it, and it's not for me to, to say. But I would very much rather have this <coughs> facility in place rather than having Having, having people who are forced because they have no other option to, to, to relieve themselves in public. That's, that's, where this, that's where this facility comes in for me and that's where it strikes home for me. So, um, Member McCoy, I'm sorry. With that being said, um, if we go back up to the um, other Catholic charities that were up there further above, mm -hmm. um, 
and why aren't they co are they collaborating? I just don't remember that part of it at all, as to where um, if, if we're funding them um, those amounts of money that it can't be. Member Fadden. I just wanted to point out that when the individual came for the interview on the bathrooms, he did promise that he would take that the suggestions into consideration, and I think being funded at far less than they had asked for would be a big motivation. And next year we would have to look at that even harder. Steph? The, uh, to answer the question from Member McCoy, the St. Vincent Health Apartments is transitional housing for people who are homeless. They are allowed to stay there up to uh, 24 months and then they have to transition into permanent housing. The Resident Empowerment Program is a jobs training program for um, people who reside in the shelter or in the uh, St. Vincent Health Apartments, and they are provided with um, job training and uh, bus passes in order to go to job interviews or go to work. And the third Catholic Charities Program is the Public Works Trust. And to think of how I just, one of our biggest challenges, one of my biggest challenges when I first sat down at this table was recognizing that you do have these large organizations, Catholic Charities, if I'm not mistaken, they're worldwide. Mm -hmm. So you'd be thinking they can, that they can fund all that, but we need to remember that this application is not for Catholic Charities. This application is for St. Vincent Health Apartments. This application is for the public restrooms. Um, and Catholic Charities is the organization that's, that's doing that, but this is for a very specific program within their umbrella, umbrella and their overview. And it's hard for us. It's hard for us to make that distinction um, and to see all of that, but that's why the budgets that we get and everything are for this specific program. Um, Member McFadden. And I still want to reiterate, if there's something that you, you know, you want to make us feel passionate about, yeah. <laughs> if you feel there's a duplication of services there, speak up. Say, I suggest that we take this much money from this organization because I feel that that they could collaborate better with this organization and we'll take that money that we're taking from them and put it someplace else. Um, we do that we, hopefully not all day. <laughs> <laughs> we're very close. Well, then when I look at um, the Salvation Army vocational training and then um, um, staff, Sean Bolster, just said that um, Catholic Charities also had um, an organization that did vocational training as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, am I correct? That's the resident training program. Resident. Yes. But it their is. training is only for the people that are residents of their facility. Is that correct? Or go to their facility and the vocational training shop for staff. The vocational training for Salvation Army is for the clients who reside at Salvation Army, so they are different clients. It, it's difficult, I know, um, board members with the homeless programs. It appears that a lot of the agencies are providing similar services. However, most of the agencies have um, provided themselves with um, niche, uh, niche, niche uh, Client, populations, yeah. if you will. The Shade Tree services women and children. Catholic Charity serves men. And uh, there are women in the um, transitional housing. Um, Salvation Army serves uh, both. Got areas that do domestic violence, so everybody has their specific clients. However, a lot of them do work together so that they can refer and recommend clients. And we did helps. hear a lot this year, Defender Pathos, we did hear a lot this year about the collaborations, about these organizations and looking at each other. And I think we're going to see a bigger trend in that next year. They're hearing us, they're listening to what we say when we sit at this table and ask them questions, and they are going out and they are making sure that there is no duplication of services and that they're sharing best practices. But um, there, obviously there's, there's always room for improvement, and I'm betting next year we're going to see that. So with that being said, do we have, we currently have available funding, $2,696, and we can of course make changes to any of the recommendations that are currently up there, suggestions that are currently up there. Yeah. Member Aker. Yeah, I'm uh, board member Aker. I'm uh, Nevada veterans, United States veterans. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see. Uh, they are. <coughs> I'm looking for their. Right there. I think they're under that. Right there. Yeah. Okay, you said they have 
available? Yeah, it's right up there at the top, but we have to give a minimum of five, fifteen thousand. I would like to bring that down to the, to the United States Bankers. Then what would you like to bring it down to? Oh, do you'd like to add the twenty six ninety six? Excellent. Yes. Okay. Because then, uh, it's an organization that's going to be getting bigger with everything. Okay. So that's the suggestion. So just delete that, and, put, and then it'll tell you what to fill in. Yeah, thirty-four forty-four. All right. Okay. Next. Fort 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 um, I'd like to go back to um, what are they called? Variety early learning. Okay. Please. What's their What's their we're trying to make it easy. Their score is 80.57. There you go. And I would like to award them like 75%. <coughs> and that leaves us over budget $27,188. Where would you like to take that from? Um, Split it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. The goal is to get to zero. We okay. Easy about how you get there. Can we see what? Make it smaller so we can see more. No, this is. I think this is. We can see. Actually, Deb, I'm having an awful time with scrolling back and forth. Okay, then let's see if we can make it smaller. So I would like to see. How small you can get it, how many organizations we can get up can there. If, if you're done with your uh, <coughs> with the sorting, the top, you can go up and get rid of that menu and picture it up and bring it up a few more. That's lines. a good point. Yeah, let's let's get rid of that. Let's make this full screen. Yeah, not that. Not that full. <laughs> yeah. No, if you go to view, uh, if you go to view, you can make it full screen. There you go. And then just use your arrow keys or whatever to, there you go. So that's going to make it a little easier. Does that help a little bit? Because yes. that gives us, that shows everybody that we're looking at funding. Um, actually, actually it doesn't. No, it doesn't. We can, can, we, can we go back to regular screen and sort just by those that we are, that we currently have an, a recommended grant for, and then we'll make it big screen so that we can do that. Is that right? Just the, the groups that we have recommended grants for. So select everything. So select all of the columns B through G. And then, uh, no, not the top guys. Just starting, I'm sorry, starting from the four. Service. 4B through 4G. And then select everything that's not gray. There you go. And then sort. And you're going to sort by... We're going to leave it at a, at a level. There you go. And uh, we're going to sort by uh, recommended grant award. Actually, switch that, change that to recommended rating averages and, and put recommended grant award underneath it. There you go. There you go. Uh, and uh, rating averages should be largest to smallest. Okay, and then that's it. Perfect. Okay. Board member recognizes. Uh, board member Jordan has joined us. We're so glad you could make it. Thank you. Thank you. So now you can go to full screen. Now you can go to full screen, and you might be able to fit all of them on one screen. No, they're not all there. Why didn't it sort right? Well, this is still a lot better than... Okay. Try to that. No, it should be fine. It's fine. We'll leave it where it is, because we know that the other three are the top three from the other categories. So, um, okay. And now right-click and go to sort. Custom sort. Yeah, I know. You need to do um, 
Oh, she's recommended right. First. Recommended grant needs to come first, and rating averages needs to come second. They was right the first time. Listen to the blonde. That's what you get. <laughs> <coughs> All right. No, you're good. Yep. Oh. We'll figure this out eventually. Whoever's going to listen to this recording is going to know a lot about Excel when they're when they're talking about this. <laughs> That's, uh, that's all I can tell you. You know, well, if you see the arrow, do you see the arrow next to options? No, click that again. See the arrow next to options, the down arrow? Move that, hit click that. Click again. There we go. There you go. Now hit OK. Ha ha! I think you had right it. There. Right Go back up because I think I think our last our last one was right okay. there. Okay. Hey, look at that! You got the whole screen on there. Woohoo! Yeah, that's all. <coughs> okay, so we are currently over budget on our recommendation by twenty-seven thousand one hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Member McCoy. Member McCoy. Um, could you um, clarify family promise for me, please? Staff. Sean Bolster, Staff Family Promise is the emergency shelter program. It's the only program we have currently that keeps families intact. Okay. And they only requested fifteen thousand dollars, so you cannot go under that. Tammy. Oh, okay. Devinder Pappas, I okay. Let's uh, you know. Let's look, look. Can we can we do one more quick sort because I need to get the, the ratings back in order. So we'll sort by we'll sort by recommended. Ugh. Oh, I know what we'll do is we'll sort by recommended grant and just say it's not zero. That should do it. Remember, Mark should make the other two correct. I think. So if you go to sort, custom sort, and then it's, it's instead of values, say click on sort on values. Okay, go to the right, the order, custom list. Uh, it's not giving us a not equal to zero. What do you? What is? What do you want? I want it to give us, I want it to group. Oh, okay. Okay. What I want to do is I want to take our 15, our 10 programs that we're going to fund, and I want to sort them, I want to sort them back by their rating average so that we can figure out where we're going to take that 27,000 from. categories still? I'd like to see, no, we don't care about sorting on them, but I'd like to see them. I mean, I obviously want to see okay. them. I think the most important thing now is to have those ten that we're gonna that we're suggesting to fund at this point, You're gonna and to show their scores. I know, I know, I know. Right there. Switch. The averages and then the recommended grand one. Yeah. No, see that. <coughs> undo, can you undo that? No, let's go ahead and no, 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 wait a minute. Just trust me here. What is it? Control Z. Control Z will undo? Yep. So Control Z. Awesome. Now just select the ones that the 5 through 15, the ones that we're actually funding, and then sort those. There you go. Just select 5 through, 5 through 20, rather, and sort those by the recommended grant, by the rating average. And then, or I guess, do we want to sort by category? Or do we want to sort by rating first, guys? Rating. Uh, rating. Member Jordan rating first. Okay. <coughs> so we're going to remove the recommended grant. 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 Remove the recommended grant
we've already got a grant, because we've already grouped, we've already got everybody who's getting granted a supplicate vote where it says delete level. There you go. And then we want to do by rate and then category, so it's already set. Okay. There we go. And those are the 15 programs that we are proposing to fund. And we're 27,000 over, but there's, they're currently sorted up there by their score. Excuse me. And we have to find 27,000. Remember, Jordan, if you're, look, if you're looking at the, as far as the average itself, I think we need to come to with some type of medium, such as 80 and above, and then the ones that are below, target oh, we them. Actually, we actually already did that. What we decided was we would eliminate anybody who scored below 78. I'm sorry, 76. Anybody who scored below 76, and we agreed, uh, or what we suggested was that we take their amount for the remainder. There were, okay. there were um, 30, uh, 30 applicants remaining. We took those and we multiplied their amount requested by their rating average as a percent. Correct. And then we took 75% of that to give us a baseline. So nobody is getting more than 75% of what they requested based on their score. And we also sorted and directed, we discussed having our focus this year be on homelessness. There's obviously need everywhere, but homelessness is 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 uh, the the seems to be the foundation of it all. So we we discussed making that our focus. The on the categories, the ones you see that say direct services, uh -huh. are those agencies that direct offer direct services to the homeless and only to the homeless. You're going to see other ones that say <coughs> homeless prevention that offer their services that either through their through the definition of their application or through the board's interpretation, their services. Um, and benefit the homeless as well, and they, but they might benefit other people as well. For instance, that legal group, they'll take anybody who walks in the door, but they also help the homeless. And then we have our other categories as identified by the city of Las Vegas. And we determined, or we have suggested that we will fund the first, the highest scoring agency in those three categories um, so, that, so that we're at least recognizing those categories exist and, and, and acknowledging their high score and, and the work that they're Thank it's you. not perfect, it's not fair, but well, it's pretty right it's on. So now we're just trying to figure out where we're going to pull from the recommended that's suggested up there, the 27188, so right. we can be at zero funding. Member McCoy, did, Member McCoy, did you guys move Catholic Charities at um, the toilet? It's going to be, it's going to be down lower. It should have been at 84, it should be there. Oh yeah, it fell right off the bottom. So there it is. Remember, we had a discussion yeah. about their score and how it possibly got that low score, and then we made Based a suggestion the of what the need was needed. Well, the basic need is twenty thousand. Um, Member Hartley, give me just a second. Okay. Right Member McCoy. So. Um, if we decide to base on um, direct services and um, homelessness and we've moved the Catholic public restroom, Catholic charities, public restrooms up, then um, I suggest that we remove, spread the word Nevada Kids to Kids Literacy. We can absolutely do that. So if you zero that, that was that. the highest score for, 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 for a young childhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember Hartley? Um, it was just that was just my suggestion that we recognize the highest scoring for the other categories that the city of Las Vegas had promoted. But um, that's absolutely. Yes, I'm sorry, I was calculating and missed the first part of that discussion. What was the reason? I'm sorry that you said for for zero funding um, in early you. Um, because I said that if we're taking Catholic Charities, public restrooms, and we're moving it up out of the category that we automatically, we suggest we move them above the cut we, cutoff. We suggested to move it above the cutoff. Then I suggested that just because it was an early childhood um, literacy, that we zero fund it and move it down below. And it, use it's that. Not, as it's I, not I understand what you're saying. You're talking about dollars and cents. <coughs> early youth, early youth, and early childhood is one category. If we're going to fully fund the top score from each of the remaining categories. Well, we're not uh, fully funding. I'm actually suggesting the no, minimum no, no, fund. Excuse me. If we're going to 
we're going to fund the top scorers from each of the remaining categories, then I think that we should stick to that. I'm, if we're going to do the top score in each of the following categories, then I think we need to do that, or maybe we should consider taking the fallout. I don't see how we can just take that one category and, and target it. So, well, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. With that being said, then I would say I agree, but to make that um, fair across the board, then the Catholic Charities Public Restroom needs to go back down to what it was then. Member, Member Oslin, um, when you do the math for variety, you're funding at 75% when everybody else was 65 or below. Because if you remember what you did originally is you multiplied the amount requested times their score. Mm -hmm. So for example, for Safe House, that would be 83% of 37,000. And then you multiply that times 75%, and that comes out to about 60-something percent. So you're actually, you know, if you want to make this kind of equitable I agree. and fair, I'm it should okay probably be somewhere in the 60% range. Okay, so that's, that's the straight out. So if I multiply that times 60%. Isn't it be 75%? No, what you did originally was you multiplied the amount requested times their score, and then you multiply that times 75%. Right. That's, and that that's takes you down to somewhere around 60 of an actual amount of requested. That's what I was working on. Okay, okay. I, I, Sorry, I, I agree. That's okay. spreading kids. Okay. So then what we have is yeah. times .75. Then um, I'm going to piggyback on member on, on I think member Hartley. I'm going to suggest that we fund Variety Early Learning Center in the amount of $21,825. That is their score times, their, that's their requested amount times their score times the 75%, which is just what we're doing for everybody else. Okay. So where does that put us? That puts us at 28,175, which means we can go back to our original, who had the highest spread score the in each word. category. I would like to suggest that we fund Spread the Word Nevada Kids okay. to Kids Literacy in the amount of $15,000. And that gives us $13,175 to distribute amongst these other agencies. Um, keeping in mind that for the first two, the top two priorities, the two that scored over 90, we did leave them at just the straight, their request times their rating. We did not reduce that down to 75% right. to, to recognize that they did get the highest score. Member McFadden. Um, I would suggest that we take the available funding I still very, feel very passionate about having restaurants or restrooms available. And I'd like to put that. Never hardly. Okay, she so got, got to it. Got to it first. Else. Yes. No, we don't. Yes, we do. We have oh, that's right. right. We got to come up with two thousand two grand. Funding is fifteen okay. thousand, so then we got to come up with two grand from another agency. Then, then we su I suggest we fund Catholic Charities Public Restrooms in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars. And I suggest we take the remaining deficit of $1,825 from Health of Southern Nevada, Shannon West Youth Center, on the basis of their, their score. The second one was right above it. Right above it. Right there. And then, so we'll fund, I suggest we fund them in the amount of $31,008. Board members, any more discussion? <laughs> Board members, do we have a motion to close discussion? Member Member Hartley, I saw a hand go up. <laughs> <laughs> I, it did. I, I can't see the whole room. I just wanted to make sure nobody else had. Okay, I move that we close discussion. Second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Member Aker. All in favor? Aye. Let the records show that we have a unanimous vote of eight. Okay. We now will make our motions. The first motion that we're going to make is regarding the agencies that scored below, <coughs> excuse me, below the 76 threshold, with the exception of the Catholic Charities Public Restrooms um, on the zero funding. We can do a group motion on all of those.
Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make one remark for everybody who's below 76, and then the other ones that were zero funding, we're going to have to make remarks on a line-by-line -line basis as we go. Okay? Am I correct there, staff? Thank you. So do we have a motion to zero fund all of the agencies that scored below our minimum threshold of 76 rating with the exception of Catholic Charities Public Restrooms? I so move. Member Hartley, thank you. Member Hartley, do we have a second? A second. Member McFadden, thank you. All in favor? You abstain? Okay, so I have all in favor. I have six in favor. Uh, uh, not in favor. Against. In That's favor. the word I was looking for. I have one against. Abstain? Are I'm, you? I'm, I'm against. Okay, we have two against. So we have six in favor, two against. Motion carried. Now we need individual motions on the remaining 30 applicants. So we'll just start at the top. Member, oh. Member McCoy? You may have me confused in about five minutes. I'm that's sorry. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's what I was asking. The, the motion again was um, with the exception of the, the, exception of the public. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. That's that the portion. Okay. 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 Yes. okay. So <laughs> what we need for this portion is very similar to what we did for HOPLA. We need a member to make a motion to recommend to the city council that we fund this program in the amount of this amount. So we got our team back. You guys are awesome. You guys ready? Member McFadden. <laughs> All right. We're ready? I'd like to make a motion that we make a recommendation to fund the shade tree Forty thousand dollars, four hundred forty thousand four hundred and seventy-six dollars. The city council. To the city council. Excuse me. Member McCoy. I second. All in favor? Aye. Records show that it's unanimous. Eight members. Member McFadden. I'd like to make a motion that we make a recommendation to the city council for Women's Development Center to be funded twenty-two thousand nine hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Member McCoy. I second. All in favor? Records show it's unanimous with eight votes. Member McCoy. Like Member McFadden. I'm so sorry. That's all right. I'll be, I'll be one of those at once. <laughs> I make a motion to make a recommendation to the City Council that Catholic Charities receives funding in the amount of $63,910. For their St. Vincent Health Apartments. For their St. Vincent Health Apartments. Member McCoy. I second. All in favor? Records show it's unanimous with eight votes. Member McFadden. I'd like to make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council that we fund Catholic Charities Resident Empowerment Program for $55,859. Member McCoy. I second. All in favor? Records show it's unanimous with eight votes. Member McFadden. I'd like to make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council um, to fund Foundation for Positively Kids Early Intervention for Developing to Sit. Developmentally disabled children in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars. I second. Member McCoy. All in favor? Records show se uh, yes, seven yes votes. Abstain. So we have one abstention. State the um, abstention. The, the member uh, Member Miller abstains. I must abstain for making the vote since I sit on the committee for the foundation. Thank you. <coughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a recommendation. Make a recommendation. I'd like to make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council to fund Lutheran Social Services Nevada Homeless Prevention in the amount of forty-eight thousand nine hundred eighty-eight dollars. I second, Member McCoy. All in favor? Records show that's unanimous. With eight votes. Member McFadden. I'd like to make a motion that we make a recommendation to City Council to fund the United States Veterans Initiative. Supportive services for veterans and families in the amount of $34,444. Member McCoy has second. All in favor? Market show us unanimous pay votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund the Salvation Army vocational training in the amount of $31,463. Member McCoy has second. All in favor? Records show it's unanimous with eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund Safe House Emergency Shelter Domestic Violence, domestic violence in the amount of $23,285. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Records show that's unanimous with eight votes. 
Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund spread the word Nevada Kids to Kids Literacy in the amount of $15,000. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous for eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund Rebuilding Together Southern Nevada Rebuilding Day Senior Repair in the amount of $15,000. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous with eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund Variety Early Learning Center tuition assistance in the amount of $21,825. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous with eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund Health of Southern Nevada Emergency Resource Services in the amount of $35,773. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous for eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund a family promise of Las Vegas opening doors in the amount of $15,000. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous for eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund help of Southern Nevada Shannon West Youth Center in the amount of $31,008. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to fund Catholic Charities Public Restrooms in the amount of $15,000. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous with eight votes. We are now getting into the zero funding. We do have to provide a reason for the zero funding for these programs. So what I would suggest is that we have somebody make the motion in the second and then we, we've all been here for these programs. We may know, we may be able to provide some insights and discussion on why some of these were zero funded. So during the discussion, that's when we'll explain why it's zero funded and then we'll do the vote, okay? The same thing that we'll just You're going to do the same thing. We'll just have discussion before we do call for vote. All right. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to zero fund the Blind Center of Nevada Day Program. Member McCoy, I second. Discussion? Member McFadden. Oh. Was reading the previous. Defender Pappas, unfortunately, due to restricted funds available to us this year, we made a decision that for those agencies that are not providing direct services or homeless prevention that we would fund those agencies that's the only the agency that scored the highest out of each one of these categories and unfortunately blind center of nevada did not score highest for the special needs category for this year okay. i have one question before we can yes. um now that we have set this as a priority and it basically maintains the rest of the way would I be able to simply state restricted fund priorities for the rest of these? Or do Could we, we do a blanket for the rest of them, or do we need yeah. to do each one of them by one no, by one? No, you're going to call each one. Each one. Uh, and and can then I just say restricted, restricted priorities? Thank you. Okay. okay. So um, all in favor of zero funding, line center of Nevada. Record show it's unanimous with eight votes. Uh, that's right. Member McCutt, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund family and child treatment domestic violence. Um, can't do them all. Just do them one by one. I should say. No, we to, you said we had to do them each individually, right? Yeah, but make a motion for and each individual. I say, I due to restricted fund priorities. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. You can do it all in one motion. Right. So we can just continue calling? Well, you're going to do a vote on right. number 25. Or we haven't had a second on that yet. Member McCoy, I second. And they're being zero funded due to restricted funds and, and funding priorities. Is all in motion? Yes, Are all in favor? Record shows unanimous with eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a recommendation, or make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund lead Discovery Children's Museum Youth Works due to restricted funds and priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous with eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund Nevada Partners Summer Education Program due to restricted funding priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? 
record show it's unanimous for date votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund the Jewish Federation of Las Vegas Senior Lifeline Program due to restricted funding priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record show it's unanimous for date votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund foundation for an independent tomorrow job training for homeless prevention due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record show it's unanimous. Eight votes. <coughs> Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund community counseling center due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record show it's unanimous for eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund Clark County Public Ed Foundation, DBA, the Public Education Foundation, Family Literacy Program due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record show we have seven all in favor. Abstain. Member Miller abstains. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund communities and schools of Nevada, Rancho High Freshman due to restricted funds priorities. Member McCoy, I second. <coughs> All in favor? Record shows unanimous for late votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to zero fund Nevada Senior Services Incorporated Senior Assessment Program due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous for late votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund Boys and Girls Clubs of Las Vegas College Bound due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous for eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund after school All Stars Las Vegas after school program due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous for eight votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund the Las Vegas Natural History Museum field trips due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Record shows unanimous for votes. Member McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund the Latin Chamber of Commerce Community Foundation job training for homeless prevention due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Show Mr. McFadden, I'd like to make a motion to make a recommendation to City Council to zero fund Nevada Health Centers Incorporated Senior Dental Program due to restricted fund priorities. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor? Member Hurtland? All in favor. Okay, unanimous. Eight votes. Thank you very much. Member McFadden, I just want to say that. I still believe that we did good, but this was the most difficult decisions. Oh, we have to do all these as well? We did them as a group. As a group. Okay. We already, small. the very first thing we did was made a motion to zero fund all of those because they were below the threshold. So we've already handled those ones. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And do we have a motion to present the slate <laughs> to forward the slate as presented. Member Miller, I would like to make a motion that we forward the slate of recommendation for for, people. for community, <laughs> for, com for, community. CDB, for the CDB grant for 2012. The CDB grant for fiscal year 2012-13 to, to City Council. Member McCoy, I second. All in favor. Vote record show. Motion carried unanimously. Defender Pappas, I just want to. This this has been the hardest year for me, um, but at the same time, incredibly rewarding as a board. You guys are awesome. We really came together. We asked great questions. We worked together. Staff, this new Zoom grants program is wonderful. Um, I'm very much looking forward, assuming I get appointed again next year, to working on this next year and seeing how we're going to make this process better. It breaks, it absolutely breaks my heart.
that we had to, yeah. that we couldn't fully really fund anybody, that we had to zero fund so many agencies. There's so much good out there that this city does that we can't, th that I wish we could do more. And I am so grateful to staff and to the city of Las Vegas for, do, for, for providing this opportunity for our home, for, for our neighbors. Thank you. And I hope that either that our needs decrease next year or yeah, I hope they don't set a price on it. That it's a little, little less for the, the reasons of, that we've chosen this year. I would just like to say thank you to the board and the staff, and it was really nice working with you guys and kind of understanding this process. And it was kind of sad to see the need that was out there and the limited funds that were available in order to assist with everything. But I think working with what we had, I thought we did an excellent job. And I want to say thank you guys. I appreciate the experience, and I hope to see you next year. No, 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 no. 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 I have a question for staff. Staff, there is one. You said there's one seat available in this position from Ward One. I have to uh, relook at the at the wards. Sadly, okay. I don't know them off the top. That's okay. But I'll be reply. Uh, Sean Bolster staff. I will be um, sending a report to the Mayor <coughs> Council as to who participated and who did not participate. If you could let us know if any positions become available in our wards, because I'm betting that at this table we have people, you know, these are, we're, this is not the only thing we do in our, in our communities. So if you could let us know, then we might be able to make recommendations to some of our fellow active people in the community and might be able to find some way to fill some of these spots that we have officially empty today. The, uh, on the city clerk's website, there's a form, and the city clerk does forward those to uh, me. To send upstairs uh, when they're ready to make get the board reappointed or get new board members. Yeah, there's an application. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, if we know happens. anybody who might be interested, we should have them go in there and fill out the application. Great. Right. I never, I didn't see yours, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm Miller. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Staff, I have a question just for verification. So, with this, with what we've just done. We'll be going in front of City Council on April 4th. April 4th. Okay. Be there, be square. Member, uh, board, or chair, please. You have to go to the <coughs> participation as well. Yeah. Right. Yes, address. yes, absolutely. Um, so the final item on our agenda is our citizens' participation. Um, as always, we have, and, and Philip, I just want to say how much we appreciate. Oh. The fact that you do stay here for all of this and, and, um, and, and everything you do, your organization. I just want to say uh, I wish I had Excedrin to give all of you and Tums because this is this is just an absolutely incredible experience, and I wish everyone knew the time, the energy, the, the pain that each of you goes through because it, it breaks my heart, and I just see this and, and I see it all in you, and I go back to Member McFadden and your comments that came from your heart. That is just priceless in terms of, I wish people could hear that and, and hear that expression. Uh, Chair Pappas, when you talked about, you said thank you for bearing with us in terms of the audience here. No, I, it's thank you all as a team, as a group, for what you do, for what you spend the time. If you didn't care, you wouldn't be in this room taking the time to do that, and I recognize that, and it's, it's about coming together as a, as a group. I just, um, I, and I wish, uh, uh, Chair Pappas, I could take you back and use my, my spreadsheet guru, because the way you get all these numbers, uh, collaboration and partnerships is so important. That's what we'll be working towards. I appreciate that you went there for homeless prevention because that is where people are out on the streets. They're suffering. Um, the scoring system, I appreciate that being recognized as, a, as a, because we work so hard to come together. Um, and I can promise you that uh, for public restrooms and, and the terms of the discussion was there, I appreciate the consideration you gave for that. I will make sure from Catholic Charities' perspective that we go and, and look in the community to make sure we can try to take that. I will take that on myself, and next year when I'm before you, you can rest assured that that will be taken care of, or at least I will have made an effort to, to take care of that. Um, and finally, I just want to say thank you to all of you for your time, your patience, for the weeks that we've been together. I feel like I, just, I get to know all of you, and I have to wait a whole year, but this is something that I look forward to because this is something that you change the future of all of us. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, from Catholic Charities, and most importantly from the community and the clients that you will help serve. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kat. We'll see you on the 4th. Yes. Uh, yes, I'll see you on the 4th.
Okay. Did, did you know? um, okay. Well, let's find out. Let's just double check one last thing from staff. Anything else from staff, attorney? Anything else that we need to do? Can I? I'm sorry. I'm sorry one Staff, and I meant to say that too. Mm -hmm. Tammy and Sean and everyone in Parks and Neighborhood and Recreation, I mean, and, and Recreation Services, the new title, they have, they are phenomenal. I said it before, but I will recognize them so much. They help us, help you to be able to go this process. Thank you all. Thank have you, a wonderful sir. night. Staff, come forward. Sorry, I don't have to You guys really, yeah. excuse me, you really kicked about this year. You have less staff than you've ever had. You've lost many staff throughout the city. You've put on a new program, and you have less money to work for. And as hard as this was for us, I know it's harder for you. I did this spreadsheet. Yeah, but you kept up with us. That was a hard member to work with. I just wanted to make a personal comment in regards to thanking the staff, uh, especially Sean, who helped me in every way. I do apologize to the board and to uh, the staff members also for my, my lateness. An example of the good software that you, that somebody had picked out. I'm just giving you guys credit for that, and continue with it. Um, unfortunately, I was at a meeting in which software was designed for one of my companies, and we lost six hundred fourteen thousand dollars. So picking the right software is very important. Okay, so I can only have high recommendations, and the babysitting you did for most of us, me included, I do I do appreciate that. And uh, again, my, my total recommendations, and hopefully I'll be here next year uh, to fulfill that. Again, thank you. Thank you, sir. At uh, Schoenbold Staff, I can assure you that the board members that are sitting here today uh, definitely will move forward and let uh, Mayor and Council know that you guys did a, a great job. You really thank did. You. I'm hoping again that we get um, Member DeSalvo and Member McGrath back next year, that their work doesn't interfere with our timeline. So. Any suggestions you guys have on um, scoring, um, questions we may have missed in the application, please don't hesitate to uh, send me an email. I have a question for the attorney. Sure. Would it be possible, I'm thinking, there's there's a lot that goes on as you've seen. Um, would it be possible if, if we could schedule a, um, a non-mandatory, but probably legally noticed workshop after the last application is reviewed and we've had the last, I'm going to call it an interview for lack of a presentation. After the last presentation, if we could schedule a workshop where board members can sit down with staff and, and talk about things like remembering to the stuff that Sean told us at the beginning. Because by the time we're sitting at this table today, it's we've prob we're probably past the point of thinking about that. It would be awesome if we could legally have a workshop that we could sit down, no decisions would be made, but we could sit down with staff and staff could go through and say, when you're looking at this, don't forget this and this and you know, all of that fun stuff. You could you could do it in one of two ways. Exactly what you said. Have it you know, legally noticed legally workshop. Legally noticed for the entire board to attend, but also invite the public. Of course to it would attend. be legally not probably noticed. The other thing to do is if the board wants to go through training and go through its own training without being at a publicly noticed meeting, but you could not have a quorum there. You can probably just have it there where, so, you know, to accommodate everyone's schedule. But if there's seven, seven of us and four of us show up, then we can't do it. Yeah, or whatever your quorum is, I'm not sure what it is. Right, it like, so it's something yeah. to think about. Okay. You just have a workshop. So but if you have a workshop where there's more than a quorum, you will have to publicly What's the legal notice, notice for, is it 10 days? So it's, it's uh, well, the, <laughs> The city of Las Vegas likes to be proactive, mm -hmm. and we actually notice, I believe it's five business days before, it, it's only required to be three, but we do five. Yes, yeah, in my days. industry it's ten, so that's yeah. why I wasn't yeah. sure. Five business days before um, the meeting. I would, as Sean Bolter staff, I would definitely um, schedule a workshop. I would prefer, I think a workshop would be better so that we can all be there. Um, and of course, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be mandatory if training. No, see, I prefer a workshop so that we could all be there. If we do training, then you can ha you can't have a majority of us there, and then I, we all would be believe, able to take full advantage. I believe, I believe that provided the opportunity to attend a, a training between the board and staff to review applications to review. Oh, right, 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 right. I'm thinking of notice versus not training. 
training we wouldn't we wouldn't need to notice. We could training would be just to go over would be yes. just to go over it wouldn't matter if we had equipment, right? If we did a training well, that's, class. That's the problem. Because if it, if you get to the point did you do that wrong? Did I say that wrong? Yeah, if you workshop go, is it doesn't matter. A workshop is right? if you have a meeting with more than a quorum, then it gets to be a little problematic. Right. So if we're going to have more than a quorum, we need to legally need to notice it. it. Yeah. So I okay. think we should do a workshop. Um, if we, you know, if we notice it, we're not going to be making decisions. So even if people okay. are there, that's fine. But it'll give us an opportunity to do a lot of the spitballing that we did today. But mostly, my big thing is before I make my my recommendations, I want to have gone through this whole process with everybody. And then you can sit down and say, okay, we've been through everything. Now remember to pay attention to this and read that. And this was missing. They actually, um, Shambles for staff, they actually do that. Then let's, then let's, let's, can we just go ahead, can you just go ahead and put that into your schedule for next year? I think that'll be really helpful. And those of us who can't attend, then I think we can't, but I think it'll help. Feel, like said, then we can feel a little more open to throw out some of our, our thoughts. And as long as we don't make decisions at that meeting, we'll be fine. Yeah. There's a way to do it where we can have an open discussion and staff can. Right, that's the word. Do something without being biased, but in, be informative about the. But not have it be an uh, open public meeting. Is that not if we're going to have a quorum. If, you, if, you, if, if you intend to have the entire board there, you will have to have this. Yeah, if we even have to have yeah. no decisions are made, even, no even no if we're made. Even, yeah, and yeah, it, it, it's the same in my industry. If yeah. you've got a quorum, uh, and we have, we run into challenges in the HOA industry where you get people together at a barbecue, and there are some people that say, well, they just had a meeting. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So it's no different um, than when the city council had their retreat at Mount Charleston. Yeah, and there was no decisions made. They just had a retreat. Just but the because invited. they were all together, public was invited. Yeah, publicly <laughs> known. Had to be. <laughs> yeah, um, I believe they did. It was very quiet. So, <laughs> it was in the um, teeny, no, the, the, the font, like <laughs> <laughs> the press was there. Yeah. So, do we have a? Uh, does anybody any more staff comments from members or staff? I'm hoping you guys will be there on the fourth. We will give a presentation to the city council where chair and co-chair will stand up and make the formal presentation of the slate that we just made a motion to move forward. Um, at that time, I am going to take advantage of the time to thank the city for what they've done and to make sure that they understand how incredibly invaluable all of staff was, including our deputy city clerk and our attorney, how critical they were to making this process work. But I'm hoping that you guys can attend because we do recognize the board that are able to um, at that meeting. So that'll be April 4th. And we're usually pretty early on the agenda. It's There's the only, pro the only um, issue that does come up is we can't say for sure that the board's going to be on at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock because it just depends on what's on the agenda. Yeah, and they had this whole they had that whole open form at the beginning of their meeting that sometimes can get kind of lengthy. But we'll oh, oh, oh. and we're going to be at the new location. We'll be at the new <gasps> city hall. Thank you. Oh, oh snap! We got to come into Nancy. Yes, we'll be at the brand new city hall. Oh, we we'll oh, 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 city hall. As a matter of fact, we are moving. I'll go where from. The last group is moving from here February 24th weekend. So no business at City Hall. And will, and will the parking validation be valid at that new location? We're working, there's a new way to do that. Oh, and thank you. We have to swipe our badges. I'm not quite sure how you'll use your That means parking. We still have our parking. Yes. Our little hanging thing should work yeah. in the parking lot? That's my question. If you could just find out about that for us. Yeah. They, they work, I just don't know how yet. We're still okay. working to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is, am I ready? Okay. okay. Yes. So what's that? Are you saying that the parking over there is restricted and that the way you get in is by swiping your card? That's how you get in? Yeah. That's so what they told us. It work because we can't get in. Well, the public, the public's able to go in, too. I'm not, we haven't been sure. told how. Okay. If you have a special ramp thing. So you know, she'll, swipe your card. she'll figure out how to make it work for us. <coughs> well, Sean will figure it out. Sean, that's what Sean does. He's standing up. All right. Yeah, Member sure. Miller. Ladies and gentlemen, this time I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. This meeting. Remember the fact? <laughs> second the motion. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.